thank you, Colby. I, I also wanted to mention in the back of the room, those that are that may still want to learn information and, and find out more about the project, there are stations set up in the back of the room. Feel free to stop by those and ask questions uh, to learn more about the project. But uh, to get us started, thank you. Uh, thank you all. Whether you're for the project or not, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, Councilman Sledge, really appreciate you calling the meeting. Uh, all those elected officials and fair board members that are here, uh, appreciate you. Also, thank you to Geodis Park for hosting this. Um, Nashville Fairground Speedway has a tremendous history. Second longest continually operating racetrack since 1904. It's been in operation. And as many of you know, there is a charter obligation. 2011, uh, there was Metro Amendment charter obligation to where it passed by 71% in a countywide election to preserve the fairground speedway and to make sure that all of the different um, uses were protected. And those were being the flea market uh, with auto racing, and the fair and the nascar was hosted at the fairgrounds from 1958 to 1984 um and then since then has uh, as you might know if you've been over there has fallen into a bit of a disrepair for the facility uh it needs some it needs some attention 40 years uh without really a a plan in place to take care of that long term an analysis that was done by the mayor's office for the fair board uh, showed that there was about $41 million that needed to be spent to take care of that. Again, take care of a facility that's already there and is protected by charter. We believe that there's a tremendous amount of unre unrealized potential. Uh, again, it's, it's there, it should be preserved, uh, and it can be used in a very effective way that can be better for everybody. Uh, Metro owns it. They have a legal obligation to maintain that facility and revenues from the Speedway just have not been a, uh, sufficient to take care of it and for the investment that needs to be made. Until now, again, there's really not been a plan. But we started this conversation six years ago and in-depth conversations about three and a half years ago with the mayor's office and with the fair board on how we feel like we can come together and truly form a partnership that can be effective and make this a better experience for everybody. Better experience for the neighborhood, better experience for users of the facility. A little bit about us. Uh, we are Speedway Motorsports. Uh, we have facilities all over the country that we own and operate. 12 NASCAR tracks from Atlanta and Bristol uh, over to Charlotte and Las Vegas. We've got Sonoma Raceway, uh, Nashville Super Speedway that's out in Wilson County and Lebanon and then uh, down the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas, uh, and others. We uh, work really hard at exceeding expectations in everything that we do. We're passionate about it. So overview of this partnership, we um, want to just stress, this is not a new facility. Some have heard there's a new facility, uh, or you're building a racetrack in our, in our neighborhood or in our city. The racetrack's been there. This is basically the existing footprint and we aren't developing any of the property into uh, mixed use or anything like that. This is really about that footprint where the racetrack is. This is remodeling that existing facility. It's also a true partnership. This would be a 30-year lease uh, with Bristol Motor Speedway for this 119-year-old facility. We would oversee and the renovations and assume daily operations, coordinating with the uses, uh, local racing, the regional fair, flea market, and others. Uh, we would commit to, to run a NASCAR race on average every other year. So when you hear about NASCAR, uh, what we're talking about there is one race every other year. Um, we would and have agreed with the fair board to coordinate all those efforts with the other stakeholders on the property. So we want to make sure that this can work for everyone. And that was very important as we uh, worked long and hard with the fair board to make sure we could accomplish that. Uh, renovations will be funded through a combination of grants from the state of Tennessee, a grant from the NCVC, uh, our investment, and then revenue bonds that would be issued by the Sports Authority. The revenue bonds will be repaid by a combination of guaranteed rent payments and then revenue generated by the use of, its, of the facility. Uh, we would be responsible for all daily, uh, daily maintenance and operation and those capital, capital improvements. And the business model. So uh, really what we see for all of our facilities across the country is our, our facilities belong to the community. 
We want to be good community partners in all the neighborhoods and uh, cities that we're in. And that's what we see here. It's what we talked about with the mayor's office, what we talked about with the fair board is this really becomes a multi-use venue. Uh, we're able to host uh, community events, business partnerships, product launches, obviously races. That's, that is something that we're in, uh, business we're in, concerts. Um, there may be monster truck event or something like that, but we want to make sure that what we do is what, what our customers want and what the neighborhood and the community would want to see. Uh, majority of the events that we would host at a renovated National Fairground Speedway would be private events. You wouldn't even know they're going on. That's really what we have at a lot of our other facilities. And it's a proven approach. Um, it's what we do, again, at Las Vegas or Texas or Charlotte, um, at Sonoma, all of our other racetracks. I want to touch on what a NASCAR weekend looks like um, because you'll see no NASCAR, and um, I understand that. Everybody's entitled to their opinion but I want to make sure folks understand what NASCAR means. NASCAR is, again, that one weekend um, every other year is what we're talking about. That would be set up that week, earlier in the week. Uh, cars would be on the track probably on Friday for a qualifying practice. Uh, and then typically there would be um, possibly a, an Xfinity race or a truck race that day, and then a cup race on Saturday. And... If there are other um, events that go on throughout that week that may or may not be on property. So we would have Speedway Children's Charities events, raising money is what we do at our other tracks. Or uh, we would use what we've talked about with the fair board is during that weekend using the Expo Center for a fan, a fan area for fans to come in and see drivers, uh, have companies set up, show off their products, that type of thing. Site plan. Uh, so again, this is the existing footprint, essentially, that what we're talking about. The grandstand would expand a little bit into turn one um, that you can see there. The red that goes around, that's, that's to identify the sound wall. So uh, slight expansion into turn one of the grandstand, sound wall all in red that would go from the end of that grandstand all the way around over into turn four. Uh, existing uh, tunnel remains there in the back stretch, kind of between the number three and six. And then we would add a new tunnel uh, that really would connect the infield. That's number five, connects the infield over towards the Expo Center and we believe can help uh, make this a much more effective and efficient uh, facility for use on the property. So events that are going on at the Expo Center, um, this would also entail a leveled out infield so we would uh, level the infield make it far more usable allow for more parking really for other events so for soccer events and others you'd be able to get more cars in there sound wall uh, and again i've, I've mentioned uh, the stations back there but we have jack wrightson with wjhw uh, that has the sound wall set up back there can talk through that he also has a sound simulation that i would encourage you to that will show you uh, what the sound level is currently for a race weekend, and then with these measures, what that would become. Uh, we've been working with WJHW uh, for, since 2019 on this project, and we really started that. We gave a list uh, of companies that we found that were in this space uh, to the fair board. And Sherry Weiner, who is here as chair of the fair board, is also an audiologist. And Sherry did her own research and came back and said, okay, you can use that one to do this study. Uh, so then we did pay for it, uh, but we had Jack go through the process of identifying how do we address this? How do we address the sound? And this partnership would obligate BMS to reduce that sound. Um, again, I would, I would encourage you to go back and have a conversation with him yourself. If we don't, some folks have said, well, what if you don't? If we don't, uh, one, it's in the contract, we have to, but we also would be fined um, that would continue to escalate if we did not. But we would build a 20-foot tall sound wall that, again, on one side there is uh, perforation, so the sound would go in. There's an absorptive material in the middle of that wall, and then it's solid on the back. This is not the same type of wall you see on the interstates. Uh, it's something very different. And then the renovation funding. So um, how do we pay for all this? So up front, we've got $17 million from a state grant and from the NCVC, uh, $4 million dollars plus and then we also cover overruns for us uh, and then revenue bonds in the approximately 70 million dollars um, would be issued from those would be the construction funds used for the project 
And then on the other side, you've got the guaranteed. So NCVC um, has 19, about 19,500 in rent payments that they would do over the next 30 years. And then uh, Bristol with our rent payment and then first dollar sponsorship, uh, we put in about $58, $59 million. Again, as soon as we sign the contract, that doesn't tie in with any of the, the other tickets that are sold or the revenue that's generated. And then next, the guaranteed revenue streams with the sponsorship. Uh, we would, again, pay a million dollars annually in rent, increases about 1% a year. And then we have an additional guaranteed payment that we make to the fair board. And then NCVC, as I mentioned before, pay $650,000 a year in rent, and they get to use it for 20 days. And then we would also pay the first dollars on sponsorship to the facility. So $600,000 in first dollar money would go to this project. Uh, so if you add all those together, um, guaranteed rent it, and the other numbers from the NCVC are about $57 million. And then in addition, when you add in the sponsorship, that's an additional 20 million. So you're talking 70, about $78 million. Uh, in late 2021, Metro engaged uh, CSL. So this was the mayor's office went and said, we're going to get our own consultant and we're going to review your numbers. So they hired CSL to review the financial projections uh, and the percentage of rents and tax collections. We felt like CSL put together a very conservative uh, perspective on those financial projections. But we said, OK, you, you got your consultant. We don't think it's right, but we'll renegotiate to those numbers. So that's what we did. We increased our rent payment after those uh, conversations, along with some other uh, adjustments to it to make sure that this would work for everyone. So the events that are used in those projections. So again, it's 10 race weekends, same number as before. NASCAR has to fit within that number. Uh, we don't add another weekend to to this in addition to the 10. It's the 10 just like are there right now. Um, in the projections, they put in a NASCAR race uh, every other year, uh, four regional races, and then five local races. We would incorporate some of the local races into some of those regional races, which is currently what happens. Um, but again, it, wouldn't ex it would not add additional weekends. There are currently 25 practice days that uh, they are used here, and we reduced that to 20. Um, they use two music events in their projections. Uh, that's what we've talked about all along. A thrill show, like uh, some of you may know who Dude Perfect is. We did an event with them in, in Bristol not too long ago. That same type of thing, great for families. Some type of holiday events, um, one car show, and then the others are private events. So again, those, those events that we have at our other racetracks that uh, the public doesn't even know that they're going on. We have XYZ company that may come in and want to have 500 or 1,000 people um, for a dinner or something else, and we'd be able to do that in the infield. Um, next are the, just all those paid out rents and user paid revenues. Um, so these are, these are outside of the guaranteed money that was referenced in the contract. These are the projections that are put together from us paying a 5% of our gross sales, of food and beverage, uh, ticket tax, and all those. That's $152 million projected. So total revenues to support the renovation with the construction grants and the guaranteed revenues uh, in the contract and then the projected revenues would be about $245 million over the 30 years. So advantages with that. I mean, this it's a, it's a 119-year-old facility. This protects that facility. It restores it. Uh, it's a Nashville landmark. It really can allow it to become a community facility that can be used for other types of events. Uh, it improves the quality of life for the community by reducing that noise. Uh, it financially removes that $41 million burden that's there now and moves it over to the, the users of the property. Uh, it creates jobs. It restores a racing back into Nashville at that at a high level. And I believe it strengthens the surrounding community and through the partnerships that we've, we've developed. Uh, we are thrilled to have the Urban League and other community partners. We've signed a community benefits agreement with the Urban League of Middle Tennessee. Uh, guarantees that we'll hire locally. We'll pay minimum of $18.50 an hour. We'll give uh, preference to Davidson County, MBE, and DBE with a goal of 30%. And we've also uh, have wonderful partnerships with Connections America, with Paul Hamilton and Glen Cliff High School, Operation Stand Down, 
and the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, we're thrilled to work with all of those. So as we kind of wrap up, I, this completes that last piece of the puzzle. This is the last piece of the puzzle for the fairgrounds. It restores this 119-year-old facility. It protects it. It improves the quality of life for the neighborhood uh, and completes that connectivity on campus to allow more parking, to allow us to move folks around easier, uh, and we believe improves the quality of life all around. So once again, I really appreciate you guys being here. appreciate you sharing your voice and, uh, and considering a partnership with us, and we look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jerry. So as we, so what we'll be doing is we will be orienting our, our three chairs here. I'm going to go over the ground rules again, and then um, we'll we'll get to lining up for public hearing. And I and I do want to make sure everybody is able to do that in a safe and somewhat orderly fashion. So, um, so reminder, we're going to be alternating speakers, two minutes each. If you are a four or you think you're in, you might be a four this project, you will be at this microphone right here. If you are against or think you might be against this proposal, you'll be at that microphone right there. Okay? There'll be two minutes. Your two minutes will start, and Laura is going to be our timekeeper, so everybody can see the clock. Please give us two things. Your name and your address and address to include zip code please because we do have i'm taking notes several people are taking notes so name and address plus zip and then go and your two minutes will be and your two minutes will be going you'll see them you'll know how much time you'll have left just again everyone please be respectful there were some people who asked who am i talking to when i'm speaking for two minutes you're talking to the three of us up at the chairs that's so that we're not having back and forth and also because we're recording the conversation so everybody's facing the same way. Um, a couple of housekeeping notes. If you need the restroom, it's in the back, in the very back. Um, if you need water, there is water along the side. I'm sorry we don't have the beer taps going tonight. Um, and then if we have, uh, again, mobility needs, if there are mobility needs, if you or somebody you know, thinks they may need to um, have a little bit of extra time to get up to the line, please consider letting that person go first um, or get ahead of you. All right? Okay. I'm going to ask that folks now begin to line up. If you are for over here, if you are against over here, one last thing to please keep in mind, we did have some, I don't know if they're still out there, we did have some folks who weren't able to get in initially because we were at capacity. If you feel like after making your comments that you've you, that you're done for the evening, please feel free to leave and get home and get home safely, and that'll allow us to bring people in who may not have been able to get in yet. Okay, I'm gonna give just a moment for people to be able to line up. Oh, and I should I should mention too. Um, we're slight, we're, we are slight around. We are at 5.43, so everybody's done great on time. Um, we are slated to go until 7.30, so just keep keep that in mind. And if that makes a decision one way or the other for you, that's fine. I just want to be totally open with everybody. All right. And then I'm going to shift back over here. I'll be turning this one off. And then, uh, Laura, do you have the microphone? You got one? To my chair. Okay, cool. I'm gonna turn this off. And then we're gonna get started. All right. Does this one work? Look at that. Okay. I'm gonna start over here first with the four line name address. Two minutes. Uh, Karen Shannon McCullough. 405 Merritt Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. Um, I'm a native Nashvilleian. I've gone to the racetrack since I was five. Um, it's become different things over the years. I have noticed a benign neglect about the fairgrounds and the, especially the racetrack. It needs updating. Um, they have 
put the people that run this racetrack in, uh, they've made it very difficult for them to make money and enough money to uh, make it ADA uh, accessible, to increase or better the, um, the stands and the bathrooms, especially. If you're in a wheelchair, you cannot get into the bathrooms. So I am for restoring this. I think it, uh, it as much, as hard as they've made it for the people that run this track, we're still here. We're still coming to the, the races. We still love it. It ought to tell you something that we love racing here in Nashville. This is different than the one out in Lebanon. This is quarter and half mile track, totally different strategies. So I am for it. I want it to be better. Um, and this is a, a good, honest attempt at it. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Charlene Harrison, 4828 Gillespie Drive, Antioch, Tennessee, 37013. There's not enough money in the world for our peace. There's not enough money in the world for people to be able to enjoy retirement. There's not enough money in the world for us not to enjoy life, period. I'm a senior in college. I need my rest at night rather than to have a racetrack. And I believe that I'm not the only one who may feel in some sort of way like this, or they may have other opinions, but we do not need a racetrack here in Davidson County. I've been here 15 years and I hear the noise. I have to sleep with a CPAP at night and the noise is disturbing. I can hear the fireworks downtown Nashville so I know about the noise and we don't need it. And we need to consider everyone that's living around us, the, the elderly and the disabled like myself. We need to think about that before we do a racetrack. Thank you. There we go. All right, name, address, two minutes. Hey, it's Scott Borchetta, 5401 Hillsborough Pike, Nashville, Tennessee, 37215. Uh, I've been in Nashville since 1981, and I've watched our city grow up into a major league city. I'm the founder and uh, CEO of Big Machine Records, Big Machine Distilleries, and Big Machine Racing. We're also the sponsor of the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix coming up next weekend. I'm also a three-time champion at the uh, fairgrounds in the super truck division and also a member of the Hall of Fame. This is the opportunity for the fairgrounds to become a major league racing facility. There's nobody else in line. There's nobody else who has the money or the commitment or the know-how to get this done. So our moment is right now to make sure that this happens because the racetrack isn't going away. It's always going to be there. So if we want this as a community, as Nashvillians, to match up to all the other wonderful facilities that we have in the city, this is the team to do it, and this is the time to do it. If we don't do this now, we're going to miss the golden era. Here's what happened after 1984. Our city leaders at this point, at that time, they missed the vision, and they let NASCAR get away. We missed the golden era of NASCAR. Well, guess what? Good news, there's a new golden era. What Jerry and company have done to the Lebanon track that was falling into disrepair, turning to dust, last month they had a sold out race. These people know how to do it. They know how to get it done. They're the right people. They're great people. I've worked with them for a long time and our opportunity is now. Don't let it get away. Thank you. All right. Name, address, two minutes. My name is Brian Nock. My address is 908 Woodmont Boulevard, Nashville, 37204. Oh, just a minute, Brian. We're going to get you started here. Or I may have to move a little closer. Should we switch? All right, go for it. My name is Brian Nock. My address is 908 Woodmont Boulevard, Nashville, 37204. I am the president of Trimble Action Group, which is the name of Chestnut Hills Neighborhood Association. 
I am also a volunteer on the Neighborhood Impact Advisory Committee. I think it is a farce to suggest that we have any pressure to approve this deal right now. I think it is disappointing to hear that these negotiations have been happening for six years. I think it's interesting that we're in the facility of MLS, who did an incredible job and practically wrote the case study on how to build a groundswell of support because people have not been invited into the racing community. I'm grateful to all of the people that have been investing time in this conversation, whether it's their paid profession or they are a volunteer or like many of our city representatives aren't paid enough for the incredible amount of work that they do. I I, I am incredibly disappointed, but also grateful to Matthew from Bristol, who is the only person who really engaged with the neighbors. Unfortunately, it was not a listening conversation. This could have been a much easier conversation where we don't have a field of people in red and white, where we started by saying, what does everyone want to see at this facility? And instead, you started with the mayor's office. They weren't even open with us. And here we are, six years later, trying to force this through. It's not necessary. Thank you. All right. Just a, just a quick reminder, the fewer reactions we have, the more people we can get to. I just want to make that point. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Arthur Smotherman, 4632 Whites Creek Pike, uh, 37189. I uh, I got passion for the Fairground Speedway because it's the only place I ever went to a race with my dad. And uh, the year the fair burnt down, I went to a race with him right before that happened. And uh, and went to the race the next year. It was just different because everything was completely different. And and over the years, I've always attended at least a couple races a year. And it's just part of my heritage. I've been here all my life since 1957 and I don't understand how people want to move here and change everything. I just don't like that. And that's none of my business, but I I've got a passion for it. And I know a whole lot of people do, and I think it should go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Name address and two minutes. My name is John Davis. I live at six, four, six Larchwood drive, uh, Nashville, three, seven, two, one, four. Um, we're not getting the straight story on how much this is going to cost and how well it's going to be funded. This is not going to pay for itself. A lot of people are not going to want to hear this in this room, but NASCAR is in decline. We are going to get stuck with this bill, the Nashville taxpayers, and it's a big, big bill. Now, that's just the beginning of it. We haven't even talked about what this is going to do to local neighborhoods. It's going to destroy some no local neighborhoods that are already struggling. Um, the traffic that's going to be in this area is going to be a nightmare. It's um, These races are going to go late into the evening. It's going to move the atmosphere of lower broad into this neighborhood. It's um, and let's talk about the noise level, shall we? You know how much noise a professional racetrack generates? Between, and according to what study you look at, it's between 130 to 140 decibels. You know what else makes that much noise? The engine of a Boeing 767. So, and I'm sorry, your little concrete wall is not going to significantly reduce that noise. So if you're thinking the noise level, well, we can live with it. Why don't you park a 767 in your driveway for several days in a row and let it run that whole time and see how well you can live with it. Nashville needs this money for its infrastructure, for emergency services, to overhaul the water main, for roads, for any number of other things that the residents here need, not the tourists. Thank you. All right. Name, name my address. Tim Lewis. My address is 5520 Fatherland Street. Uh, I'm sorry. This is a no-brainer. Why are we here? 
you're taking stick and ball sports as a whole in the Middle Tennessee area. You give millionaires a ball field to play on paid for by the back payer, taxpayer. You do the same thing with a soccer team. You do the same thing with hockey teams. Now you have motorsports and the heritage that we are, the people that we are. NASCAR racing was here long before National Football League, National Hockey League, or professional soccer. There was NASCAR racing going on right over there. Top big league. It was on live television. I watched it. I came here. My parents brought me here in 1970. They promised never to bring me back. But here I am. I might be the last of my family standing, but I'm still standing. And I'm still backed up with some people who hopefully have the same amount of drive, for lack of a better term. This is a no-brainer. Private funding is going to put national racing on our doorstep? Are you kidding me? Why are we here? In 1900, some exciting things were happening in Nashville. From 1910, Union Station was built. Union Station connected Louisville to Nashville to St. Louis. They were building Union Station. They were building the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in Indianapolis, Indiana. They were building it. At the same time, those people were racing right over here. That's historical value. I call on Governor Lee to stand up and make that a historical place because that's exactly what it is. Taking Massville's Fairgrounds Speedway away from the racing community is a nightmare. You cannot race weekly series on your 10 events at the Super Speedway. I'm sorry, you just don't do that on mild concrete like that. This is a track where diversity happens. You want to talk about diversity? A 79-year-old man can race okay. against a nine-year-old girl. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks, Bob. Th thanks, sir. All right, name, address, two minutes. My name's David De La Quilla. I live at 862 Breslin Road, Nashville, Tennessee, 37205. Two points I want to talk about, uh, fiscal responsibility and transparency. Uh, fiscal responsibility, um, I'm looking at some bullet points here. The lease states that the racetrack revenues are, quote, insufficient to pay debt services, unquote. The metro government must commit funds, quote, necessary to cure such insufficiency, unquote. The CSL report states the plan would exhaust metro's debt, debt service reserve funds and require the use of general funds to meet its financial obligations. Uh, BMS is, well, I think that gets the gist to it. It shouldn't come to taxpayers. If you can't do for work this out or get BMS, you know, to have, you know, more skin in the game, it should never come to the taxpayers. We, so, and no, let's talk transparency. Um, you know, about, it, uh, it says here, 14 only 14% of respondents in a recent poll supported the proposal. Uh, he and T Tennessee State Representative go to the state legislature to pass an unconstitutional law to circ circumvent Nashville's local decision-making process. Um, negotiations have been at personal homes of fairground board members or behind closed doors with the mayor. Transparency, that's crap. You need to have transparency and city council should go be on record that if this thing ended up costing local uh, taxpayers money, then they should vote you guys out. So, and you should deal with, with not having stuff non-transparent. Have it in the open. Thank, thank you. All right. Name address, two minutes. Hi, I'm Larry Stanfield. I live at 269 Blackman Road in Nashville. 37211. I was thinking, I pray a lot. I can't help it. There's not a day goes by that Jesus and God aren't on my mind. And I want to be fair to the people that don't want it. Okay? They have a right to be here and they have a right to say what they want to say. But when I was a little boy, my grandmother used to live up on Moore Avenue. We'd sneak down here and go to the fair. We didn't care about going. We just wanted to sneak in. It was fun. You know? And then we would go to Fair Park with my parents. We'd ride the little trains and all the rides. We had a ball, and my little friends would come with me. We'd go to Cascade Plunge. Anybody remembers that? 
you know, and we stand under that big rock waterfall. That was the coldest water you've ever seen in your life. I can sit here and in my mind's eye, I can remember where everything in that pool was. We went to the racetrack. We got autographs from all the greatest drivers. I even got an autograph from Loretta Lynn. She opened the car. It's, uh, it was fantastic. When we went home, our little faces were just covered with dirt and dust and, uh, you know, rubber and everything. But it was so much fun. And I want the children and the people that are coming up in this city now to have that thing. It's in my heart. And this place is in my soul. Please, whatever you do, don't tear our little trap down. Okay? Thank you. Name, address, two minutes. My name is Alan Pister. I live at 215 Burlington, Nashville, Tennessee, 37215. And I think everybody in this room loves their children. I think everybody in this room loves their grandchildren. But how do you put that love into action? And action, I think, needs to occur as a study. But what kind of study do we need here to love our children and grandchildren well? Well, maybe helping them have clean air as they grow up is something we ought to be thinking about as adults in this room. I have children and grandchildren that live in the Nashville area. We've already had two health advisories, at least two health advisories of unclean air, of polluted air. Not to mention the wildfire smoke that we endured last week. <clears throat> so, do you know how many pounds of pollution a NASCAR weekend puts into our atmosphere? 120,000 pounds of pollution. Multiply that by 10 events, it's over a million pounds of pollution just from the event. That doesn't count the pollution it takes to get the cars and teams here or the over 500 tires that are wasted every weekend. So an environmental study needs to be done to see what is going to be the environmental impact on the air and the water of this county, and how is this going to affect our children and grandchildren? I know the NASCAR does some mitigation efforts, and I applaud that, but they don't require catalytic converters. They don't require mufflers. You want to hear the loud noise? I get that. I enjoy that too, but it's not worth sacrificing the health of our children. So for our children and grandchildren, please put the pause button here. Let's get environmental study done. Thank you. Thank you. Name address, two minutes. Danny Farrell, 4833 Hummer Drive, 57 years in South Nashville. I just want to tell you guys, I've experienced many firsts here at the fairgrounds. My first candy apple, my first ride on a great roller coaster. But the thing that I want you to know the most is this fairgrounds over here, this little circle that everybody, you know, seems to have problems with. I've been blessed to be a working man all my life, and all the people that I grew up with, worked with, they turned into heroes over here. They turned into something special. I was blessed to be a part of the NASCAR family also, myself. And during that time, I want you to know, I've seen all the things to do with the wonderful charities. South Nashville is going to blow up with all the greatness that these people can bring us. But then I look at it from this other side. I want you guys to understand this also. I'm a taxpayer in Davidson County. My taxes went up 30% over four years ago. Okay? Now, this gentleman has proposed to take $40 million off the taxpayers and put it on his side. I want to thank him personally for doing that, but I also want to thank everybody in this room for caring enough to try to get together to keep what I love the most, which is this fairgrounds that I've been a part of for 57 years. My life has always been in South Nashville. I love South Nashville, and I help anybody in this neighborhood. This sound wall will make a tremendous deal at Breaker. As far as I'm concerned, these guys don't understand. I live next to the airport. Nobody asked me, you know, hey, Mr. Farrell, we're going to put an airport over here. Do you mind if we put it over here? They did it, and they didn't do anything for me. So these guys are trying to meet us halfway. 
So please, Mayor John Cooper, do what you've done for all the other sports in this town. Give us our special session and let us give us our vote so that we can get this done. Thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. All right, name and address, two minutes. Uh, my name is Rob Bigelow. I live at 203 Copley, uh, 37204. It's about a little over a mile away from here. Um, I see a lot of folks um, wearing Save My Fairground shirt. Um, I have uh, family members who work in NASCAR. I actually don't mind NASCAR whatsoever, uh, but I do know this. Uh, what those on my side of the aisle are asking to do is not destroy your fairgrounds. Uh, it is not. Uh, when I was when I was young, when I was young, my dad had a 1932 Ford Model A. Um, I love that car. Um, I'm very nostalgic about my, that car. Um, I love when he would drive me in it. I love going out in it. Um, to me, the fairgrounds over here is like a 1932 Ford Model A. Uh, Except for one thing, it's not being asked to stay a 1932 Ford Model A. It's being asked to turn into a 2024 Ford Mustang. Those are two different things. Those are two different things, and I'm, I'm surprised that more folks aren't talking about uh, aren't talking about that. Uh, moreover, a couple things: taxpayers are being asked to subsidize this. Two, we do not know still what the ultimate bill will be. Three, NASCAR is ignoring the overwhelming sentiment of the people who live around here. Four, four, sadly, they're disregarding the general overview and the sentiment of the city. And five, they're ignoring the fact that they already have a super speedway. That's only 20 miles from here. You better believe that the people who come into town and go to that super speedway only 20 miles from here, spend their dollars still in Nashville. Thank you all. Thank you. One second. All right, everybody, we're just a little bit in, so I'll take a deep breath. All right. Name address, two minutes. My name is James Michael Pope. Uh, I usually go by Mike. Uh, I'm 601 Jones Street, O'Hickory, Tennessee, 37138. I have been coming to the fairgrounds since 1967. One of the first race car drivers I ever met was Fluky Buford. He passed away in 2020, the same time my mom did with dementia. I'm also going through some health issues with prostate cancer, and I'm going to be doing some radiation here in the next few weeks. I love this racetrack. I've been going here for years. I've been to uh, the state fair. I've been to the uh, everything, flea market. I love this fairgrounds. I want to see it make money and i think that we can, it can make money because the football stadium is going to make money the predators and even the soccer we can it can make money i believe we can it has in the past i've seen large crowds and i've seen small crowds i thank uh marcus smith and jerry caldwell for and their bristol team for what they're doing and i hope and pray that this will happen and i respect the other side too uh I believe we can get the noise thing worked out. I just pray that uh, it will happen, and thank you for letting me come to this meeting tonight. Thank you. A name, address, and two minutes. Jason Bergeron, 1041-14-37212. I'm not going to talk about all the financial failings with this deal, all the loopholes, or how this deal is the 1996 Titans lease all over again. You know this already. I'm going to talk instead about the biggest shame of all of this, and that's Bristol and their PR team's tactics and what it says about them. Over the last five years, Bristol's lobbyists and astroturfers have threatened and harassed area residents with stunts as dumb as stationing strange people in residents' yards. And of course, we saw the recent story of a prominent Bristol surrogate threatening a mayoral candidate. If Bristol will do stuff like that now, what will they do if this half-baked deal gets rammed through? For the answer to this, look at the top, at Bristol's millionaire owner, Marcus Smith. In 2001, at a fair, after a fair board meeting, one of Marcus's buddies tweeted that when NASCAR returned, he hoped the noise would make a local woman cry out in agony and that her dog would go to the bathroom on the floor. And Marcus Smith liked that tweet because I guess he thought it was funny. You think that's funny, Jerry? 
That's what Bristol thinks of Nashvilleians, that residents who live here don't matter, and at the end of the day, Bristol will be able to laugh all the way to the bank. On the other side of this deal is Mayor John Cooper, who told me to my face on October 8th, 2021, that it, quote, it didn't matter if the affordable housing and child care center being built at the fairgrounds fails as a result of this massive speedway expansion. Think about that. A mayor saying affordable housing doesn't matter. That is the dark heart at the center of this morally bankrupt and financially reckless proposal. My question to all the Metro Council members here tonight is, who are you going to side with? Are you going to side with Bristol's millionaire owner and millionaire lobbyists like James Weaver and all their dirty money in a deal built upon simple greed? Or are you going to side with Nashvilleians who overwhelmingly are opposed to this deal? And are you going to send this deal back to the drawing board to finally demand a deal with real financial protections and real community protections? It's doable. I've been saying for five years, Bristol and, and the mayor's office just ignored that because it's about greed. I implore you, Metro Council members, stand with Nashville. Thank you. Name, address, two minutes. Bless your heart. My name is Melissa Smithson, 4714 Delia Drive, 37013. I'm one of the founding members of Save My Fairgrounds. I represent a lot of the red shirts here tonight that may not want to come up and speak. I'm also a longtime Nashville native. Before I proceed, I want to read the following resolution from 2018. Resolution 1417, a resolution expressing the Metropolitan Council's support of continuing racing at the Fairgrounds Speedway. The vote was 31 yes, zero no, and none abstained. The mission is clear, to secure a brighter future for this historic racetrack while upholding your obligation to the voters and ensuring the best outcome for our beloved city. We have a unique opportunity with Bristol Motor Speedway, a transformative partnership that can revitalize this historic speedway for generations to come. The Fair Board has diligently approved the lease agreement with BMS, ensuring much needed stability and support without burdening taxpayers. While we obtained a rapid financing for the soccer stadium, BMS has invested significant time and effort to ensure success without burdening taxpayers. Both entities can exist and thrive together here. The economic benefits of revitalizing the Speedway are substantial, invigorating local businesses and creating new growth opportunities. The recent Community Benefits Agreement with BMS promises remarkable partnerships uplifting our community, supporting schools, engaging with organizations like uh, Conexion Americas and Casa Azafran, and empowering our veterans and youth through various initiatives. Our future lies in preserving the legacy of the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway, shaping its destiny, and securing a promising future for generations to come. I implore the Council to vote yes and support this long-term lease with Bristol Motor Speedway demonstrating our commitment to the voters, the city, the Speedway, and these good people here, ensuring a bright and promising future that many generations will benefit from while all, while all, while relieving the taxpayer's burden. Us, thank you for your consideration. Oh. Uh, just, oh, just a second. Brief interlude, we do have some seats that are open, so if, if they are kind of near the first four rows, it looks like a cross. So if you are finding yourself wanting to look for a seat, you might uh, take a moment to do so. Okay, name, address, two minutes. I'm Heidi, 1711, Neil Terrace, for 21 years, 37203 zip. I was on the Neighborhood Impact Advisory Committee for 10. I don't know politics, but I know my neighbors, and we don't want this in our neighborhood. I formed Note Nashville, Neighbors Opposing Track Expansion, to give voice to the many neighbors who believe this plan has flat tires. The proposal is a dramatic increase. What happens when the 10 multi-day races, three long, week-long events, track rentals, and 40 new events for CVC and BMS aren't enough? When two huge stadium feet apart compete for events in time, both fail and Nashville loses. We have repeatedly heard that this plan shifts responsibility from taxpayers, but the financial report you have clearly states this plan will hit the general fund, taxpayers. BMS isn't putting a dime into this. It is a loan from our future. The decline of all auto racing is highly publicized. This deal solely relies on tourism and attendance and puts Nashville in financial risk. Poll after poll, not paid for by BMS, show the public are deeply unenthusiastic. Lack of racing isn't what worries Nashvillians. Losing the soul of our city due to rising costs and corporations does. 
They have bullied their way into our city with lawyers and lobbyists who want to force deafening noise, paralyzing traffic, and bad economics on local taxpayers. There is no infrastructure to support a second stadium here. There is no sound mitigation that quiets deafening noise of stock cars. But even if this deal could be better, I find most egregious that it is BMS who went behind Nashville to pass an unconstitutional law at the state level that circumvents our local decision-making process, our voice. My dad used to say, when somebody shows you who, you who they are, sweetheart, you believe them. They have shown that they have no regard for Nashville. Vote no. There are other ways to honor racing and this beautiful space. Thank you. Name, address, two minutes. I am Rob Spires, um, 128 Claybrook Lane, Antioch, Tennessee, 37103. I'm not that old. I'm 39 years old. I'm not even 40. I grew up going to Hickory Hollow Mall, Opryland, and the Fairgrounds Speedway. That was what going to Nashville was for me, for Murfreesboro. And if you look, this is all that's left. So a lot of people have talked about the numbers, the, the people that don't want it. But what about... The hard number that we do know is the 71% that passed the referendum in 2011 that says that racing will stay. There's not going to be support to overturn that referendum. It's got to be two-thirds of the vote, and it's not going to happen. So the track is going to be there. What Are we, are we going to let it just keep falling into the ground, or are we going to put some money into it so there's not an eyesore next to this beautiful stadium, next to the beautiful buildings that we've built on the fairgrounds? We have the chance to make this a beautiful property that all of Nashville can enjoy. When the vote for the stadium was going into um, hearing, one of the council members said it's not fair to take away something from somebody to give to somebody else. And I think that actually against what I believed at the time, it's worked out. The soccer stadium's here. It's beautiful. People can enjoy it. The racetrack is here. It's not so beautiful, but people can enjoy it. There's no reason why this plan can't go to improve the racetrack. It's going to be here regardless. This is the chance to make it better. Racing's not going away. It, it's not going away. So why not make it better? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Hi. Uh, my name is Laura Flaherty. I live in, on Wingrove Street right over here in 37203. Um, I'm not going to rehash a lot of the same points uh, about what a bad deal this is, how it is being rushed through, the noise, the traffic, all the concerns that my neighbors and I have raised over and over and over again. Um, I just want to remind everyone here today who this proposal will affect every day. My neighbors and I aren't politicians. We aren't lobbyists. We don't have access to busloads of people that we can ship in and speak on our behalf. We're residents. We live here, we're homeowners, we're neighbors, we're just trying to go about our daily lives in peace. We want to be able to work from home, spend quality time with our families, put our kids to get bed at night, and enjoy this lovely neighborhood that we've invested our time and money and energy into for years. We are scared of the unknown of what this hurried and rushed half-baked deal will bring to our neighborhood for years to come. The presentation earlier today said that it was interested in what the community wanted. This local community here is telling you, we do not want this. I urge council to vote no on this deal. Thank you. Thank you. All right, name address, two minutes. My name's Brent Perry. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, 1425 Electric Avenue, 37206. I have lived here all my life since 1959. I've been coming to the races out here since 59. My parents brought me in diapers, and now they're telling me I can't have a racetrack here, and I'm 64 years old, and they've lived here a long time. I don't think any of them got up there that's lived here as long as I have, and they want to take it away from me. This racetrack has kept kids off the street from racing. They have got somewhere to come race. They can come out here and race. So we need to keep this racetrack. We need to we need to go ahead and call a special meeting, and we need to get this deal done. I mean, a lot of my friends here, they want this racetrack, and it's like we don't count no more to the native Nashvilleans that have lived here. The people that come in, they want to take take our racetrack away from us. And I don't think that's right. It's wrong. They want to change Nashville. 
They want to change racing. They want racing gone. What about their football stadium and their soccer stadium? I mean, i got to pay for it, but you can't help me pay for this racetrack to upgrade it. It's been here 119 years. you telling me I can't have that? I don't think that's right. I think we need, I know we need to do this deal. We've got a man sitting here saying, hey, I'm going to put money in this. And we need to do it. Because we've been, we've been hurt by this other stuff and had nobody cared about it. Let's go racing. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Hi. Hi. Name, address, two minutes. My name's Andrea, and I live in 12 South, 37204. It's a mile and a half from here, and I cannot do my taxes, record music, or anything when the races are going on. I heard that they canceled a practice tonight. I wonder why. Was it going to disrupt this meeting? We're not going to be able to hear that. They canceled the practice. I'm here to start at the reality of this. I don't care about the finances. That's for you, Colby, and your people to figure out. The reality is this. Jerry Caldwell and Scott Borchetta. Scott Borchetta used to own Taylor Swift's uh, catalog, okay? Um, Jerry Caldwell's a billionaire. This, is, this just feels like billionaire boys with their toys. There is a speedway 20 miles south of here. Go there. Put your money into that if you really believe in NASCAR. And this man who said that there's native... Wait, hold on. Native Nashvillians do not want this. There's a lot of native Nashvillians who don't want this. And he said people come in here trying to change things. You're trying to change things. This, this is not a good idea. I want to also t tell you that Sherry Weiner is not, she's an audiologist. My husband's an audio engineer, audiologist. He used to design he hearing aids. Sherry Weiner spoke about it. She said she came to the races, had headphones on. It's very damaging to your ears. Everybody that goes to the races has to wear headphones else they're going to get ear damage. Okay, so what are you going to do? Fat pass out your earphones all the way to 12 South? I mean, this damages your ears. There's noise anxiety. She didn't speak about that. And I want to remind you that Sherry Weiner is an audiologist. She knows about hearing aids. She does not know about sound walls, okay? Sound. I'm a musician. Sound travels sideways and up. Okay, let's get real. We can hear the concerts all the way over there. So the passionate people who come up here and say, we, we've gone to races since I was six. Yay. I'm not asking you to support my hobby. That's a hobby, and you have a speedway. It's a hobby. Get it, grip. I don't care if you've been coming here since you were six. They tore down Bobby's Idol Hour. People have been going there. Johnny Cash played there. So as far as historical Nashville, get over it. There wasn't racing in 1904 with race cars, okay? So get over it. Thank you. All right, I'll just... Uh... Just a, hey, excuse, excuse me. The ground, the ground rules. Just a reminder for the ground rules. Let's limit reactions, and let's, and let's also address Jerry, me, and Laura. Okay. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Hello, my name's Frank Foley. I live at forty-one sixteen Saunders Avenue, three seven two one six. I was raised in East Nashville. I come to this track. 1970. Used to swim at the Cascade Swimming Pool. I sold Cokes at the racetrack. That was my lunch money for school. It was a sad thing the fair board let this track go down and lost these races. It was one of the only pro they in Nashville for years. The only thing we ever had. And I hear these people talking about not wanting it. They haven't been here this long. They don't know what that track does for this city and dreams for some other kids here to be here. And I want to commend Mr. Caldwell and thank you and hope that you get this done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Kristen Heggie, 1716 Allison Place, Nashville, 37203. I'm here to pose the BMS lease deal. I'm not here to get rid of local racing at the fairgrounds, so I want to make sure to bifurcate this conversation. It's not about local racing. It's a conversation about the lease agreement that continues to allow 
big businesses to bully the taxpayers into a deal that will leave us in a financial and lifestyle nightmare like what is currently happening in the Kentucky Speedway. The amount of misinformation being put out by BMS to trick the public about this deal is stunning. The Save My Fairgrounds group actually has a lot in common with those of us here tonight opposing this lease. From their website, quote, we advocate for the preservation of the original track layout, infrastructure, and iconic features. To those who have read the lease, these statements are diametrically opposed to the lease deal on the table, but align with those of us in opposition. A few more facts about this lease that is detrimental to taxpayers. Taxpayers are on the hook for shortfalls. BMS can walk away from the deal if construction costs are too high for them, yet we have not even seen a construction estimate. Countless financial and procedural loopholes allowing BMS to have the upper hand in all situations. The following requests were not, I repeat, not amended in the lease, even though requested by the fair board members that Bristol, Bristol must take must make the speedway space available for community events, green space available when not in use, track available for bicyclists, runners, and others when not in use. What are we doing? Public money for no public use? There's a deal out there for, to restore the speedway, but this is not it. If our intent was to fulfill the charter and preserve history, we should use the money already allocated to the speedway and fairgrounds to renovate and continue the local racing. Nothing in this deal is restorative. Why do we need BMS and NASCAR? another 30,000 person stadium, the CVC in their events, monster truck rallies, more music events. Not one mayoral candidate is running on more events and tourism. Everybody is running on taxpayer needs and back to the basics of improving life of Nashvilleans. The most recent poll of Davidson County voters released yesterday shows less than 15% support this and overwhelmingly over 60% of the people polled are opposed to this lease deal. When do the taxpayers finally get a voice? Name address, two minutes. Reagan Gregg, 3658 Hooker Road, Antioch, Tennessee, 37013, same as the first opponent. Terrible thing happened to me the last race. Um, my wife double booked me. I had to grill for family. I could not hear the cars in Antioch, Tennessee. The opponents will say, what about the pollution? We're not asking for permission to race cars on the property. We already have that. The opponents will say, well, we need an environmental study. What three-legged endangered horned toad moved to Browns Creek since they built this place? The opponents will say, well, why can't you go to Lebanon and race? I got an idea. Let's build a super soccer stadium. Let's make it three times long. Same size goals. That sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? And in closing, what she said. Thank you. Name address, two minutes. Oh, sorry. Hold on, just a second. Go ahead and start up. Right, it's not starting yet. Okay. All right, go for Susan it. Susan Heffernan, 1710 Neal Terrace, 37203. I have lived three blocks away from here for 24 years. I am 75 now, and I don't think I'm going to last another 30 years. But I do have some definitions for you. Um, first of all, the fair. This is the fair grounds. The fair is a gathering of stalls, amusements for public entertainment, competitive exhibitions of livestock products and skills held annually by a town, county, or state featuring entertainment and educational displays. We will talk about Wilson County. Very nice. 30 miles away. That means 30 miles there, 30 miles back equals 60 miles. The definition of fair is in accordance with the rules or standards, the group has achieved fair and equal representation for all of its members. Adverb without cheating or trying to achieve unjust advantage. The political agenda has become that of a narcissistic grab for monetary gain and power by people who don't value the local residents and livelihoods of noise, crowds, parking, limitations directly affecting us. Most of these racetrack supporters are in a town that is far away from our actual neighborhood. And we did have some money allocated for the, the fairgrounds, but it ended up going elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right. Name, address, two minutes. Rick McElwain, 1061 McElwain Place, 37211. And I'd like to say that when I was about four years old, I came down here to a NASCAR race, and Richard Petty put me in his race car and gave me his autograph. And to that day, I was hooked on racing. And from then on, I've raced down here for about 30 years. And I would just like to say that the, the fair board has already give their okay. The mayor's on board. This is our chance. If we don't do this, then we're going to have to pay taxpayer money. We're going to have to pay... $41 million to restore the place. And we're still not going to have the sound barrier, barrier walls. So the local racing is going to be a lot more quiet if, if they do come in. And they're only going to be here once every two years. And as far as the clean burning, they have clean burning ethanol fuel injected motors. That's the, that's the cleanest motors you can get. So I don't see a problem with that. And if we, if we, you know, we've been fighting this since 2011, trying to get it to stay. It's staying no matter what now, but we need, up, we need upgrades. We need improvements. Why not let somebody else pay for it instead of the taxpayers that's paying the $41 million to just kick, kick the can down the road with, with, with a loud, it's going to be loud. You know, it's going to be louder if, if we do it the way that we're doing with the 41 million than the way he's doing it. So let's try that and see what happens. Thank you. Thank you. Just a, just a quick pitch for the seats again. We've got some more open seats. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Hi, yes. Uh, my name is Craig Clark. I live at 715 Myrtle Street in Nashville, Tennessee, 37206. Um, I live in East Nashville, and I'm actually a, a supporter of the project overall, but I'm not a f in favor of the finances of the deal. <clears throat> There's a lot of good with renovating the Speedway, don't get me wrong, but most important thing is the finances, and the finances just aren't right. I've been an avid motorsport fan for almost 30 years. I grew up at racetracks in New England, both as a spectator and an amateur racer. Racetracks allowed. Always have been, most likely always will be. For 100 years, the racetrack has been here, 65 of which, it's been loud. <clears throat> we have the opportunity to have two state-of-the-art entertainment facilities of widely different backgrounds. We can bring all these in, but finances have to be the thing or can't be the thing that holds us hostage. One of the first things Mayor Cooper did when he was elected mayor was press pause on the soccer deal and make sure that the finances were right. <clears throat> we pause. Soccer ownership agreed to cover all the debt service. That was $225 million in bonds. To me, that's our benchmark. To me, that's the starting point where BMS starts. Metro is currently picking up a shortfall in revenue with BMS in reimbursing Metro if they have the revenue. Eliminate the middleman. Nashville will be utilizing its recently upgraded credit rating to make the deal possible. BMS should be able to utilize their great marketing power to fully back the bonds and debt. NASCAR is a sport that is looking to improve their spectator experience with large investments at Daytona, Bristol, Auto Club. They've done research and implemented mufflers at the LA Coliseum in the Chicago race and should be utilized here at the fairgrounds. The next gen car can inc incorporate electric components. If NASCAR is making these investments, BMS can make these investments. I encourage the fair board and council to take the opportunity to make it, the deal a good one. Let's continue the great the city's great history with racing while also making it a great financial move for the city. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Name address, two minutes. Hi, my name is Damian McNeil. I'm from Old Hickory, Tennessee, 867 Forest Glen Drive. I'm 21. I was born in Nashville. I've lived here my whole life. Uh, my life is racing. That's my job. It's uh, my hobby. It's my love. I'd rather spend my money uh, spending gas through my tank than alcohol through my liver down on Broadway. I like good things for the young people of Nashville to be able to do. I can't afford a Titans game every single weekend or go into the soccer stadium, but I can get a cheap ticket to go race and every once in a while work that money up to go race my own stuff. So more racing in Nashville. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Hi, um, Ashley Locke and 1613 Marshall Hollow Drive, uh, Nashville 37203. 
Um, I want to be super clear that I'm a native Nashvilleian, but I believe that Nashville belongs to everyone that chooses to call it home and not just people who are lucky enough to be born here. I currently live less than a 10 minute walk to the Speedway and as a literal neighbor, I can tell you this project will not improve my quality of life. I can already hear noise from the Speedway and from the research I've read, the sound barrier will not significantly decrease the noise much from louder vehicles that you all plan on bringing here. This not only affects me, but also all of the parents and children that live here too. Noise pollution is proven to cause both environmental and and health issues. I'm against bringing more noise to my neighborhood and poll after poll shows the vast majority of Nashville agrees with me. According to NASCAR, numbers are worryingly down this year from last. In fact, the opening exhibition was down almost 15% in viewership. The other races tell the same story. Would you buy an expensive house knowing your income would decrease 15% each year? I don't think it's smart to make a 30-year contract with a dying industry, a lease that would not end until I have grandchildren. Taxpayers are on the hook for a large chunk of this project. Even though polls have shown over and over that Nashville is against it, I was against the downtown stadium and I'm against another deal that makes locals pay for developments geared toward people that do not live here. I, want my I don't want my neighborhood full of cars that are coming and going. More noise, more congestion, and it makes for a very unpleasant neighborhood experience. How would you feel if your house was in the middle of a traffic jam for up to 100 days a year? I would prefer the city invest in urgent needs like affordable housing and public transit system. There are plenty of pieces of Nashville's history that do not fit the city that we are today. Your good memories are not more important than my neighbor's current lives. Nashville is a growing city and I want to keep it growing for my neighbors, not for tourists. Thank you. <clears throat> Name address, two minutes. Hello, my name is Carrie Caldwell and I live at 912 Caldwell Lane in the Oak Hill area. I love this speedway. When I was a child, I came here with my father when he used to race. He's now deceased. Uh, my deceased 99-year-old father-in-law used to watch not car racing, but motorcycle racing here. And I'm not from, you know, California or New York. The speedway means a lot to me and reality is if you don't like a speedway you shouldn't buy real estate near it okay. name address two minutes okay uh hello my name is susan norwood i live at 5760 stonebrook drive brentwood tennessee however uh Although it has a Brentwood mailing address, I do live in Nashville and I'm a taxpayer. Um, I wanna say I've lived here for 41 years. And frankly, you know, we've seen a lot of growth and I've gotten to the point where enough is enough. We've got plenty of stuff for tourists to do. We've got stadiums and bars and restaurants and we need to pause that for, for a while. Um, I'm sick of the noise, the traffic, the pollution, and I know others share my feeling. Uh, we've talked some about the, the problem of the noise. The CDC has done studies that show that noise can uh, cause high blood pressure in people, heart disease, sleep disturbance, and hearing loss, and in people of all ages, including children. And another thing, uh, a study that has, has shown that children who live in noisy areas um, have problems because of that. They have problems with memory. They have problems with their attention level. And surprise, they have problems learning to read. And that's been all over the news. Um, so I am hoping that our, that our leaders and our legislators will say no to this deal. Thank you. Thank you. All right, name and address, two minutes. Hey, hey guys. My name is George Saldana. I live at 37211, right on Thompson Lane, and uh, I've raced here for 25 years. I've actually broke my neck on that racetrack. And I also spent days cleaning where the, it flooded. I, don't, I didn't see any of you guys down there helping clean up this place. We have kept this racetrack going out of our own pocket, basically. We've painted this place. The, the town has not put any money in this place the whole time I've raced out here, and that's a, that's a fact. And if you're saying that this place isn't noisy, you guys need to wake the hell up. It, it, this, I, I drive back and forth to work. I work right down the street, too. I drive through this neighborhood every day for the last 40 years. You can't drive through here when this 
is going on. When there's a race going on, the, the drivers are courteous. They're not going to block traffic. And I don't know what the hell y'all are talking about. I've seen beer cans all strewn all over after a, put, after a game here. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, th what Bristol plans on doing, and we'll hold them up to it. We're not going to. We're going to make sure not, we're not going to get stuck with this bill y'all are talking about. We actually caved to have this place built. Y'all should give us the respect back and let us do our racetrack. I mean, it's bullshit. Thank you. Just, just a reminder, everybody, just to address three of us up here. All right, name address, two minutes. Uh, my name is Zach Kelly, and I live with my partner and two corgis at 2197 Nolensville Pike, which is about a quarter of a mile up the road here. Uh, tonight, I'm here in my capacity as a private citizen and as a member of my community association's board of directors. There are a lot of things that we need in this neighborhood. Until a month ago, it was impossible to walk from my condo to this place because we didn't have sidewalks that connected. My neighbor, who's in a wheelchair, still can't make that trip because so few sidewalk, the few sidewalks that do connect are in disrepair, blocked by NES poles, or not wide enough to be ADA compliant. Just yards from here, you can go and see that our crosswalks aren't striped, the right-of-way is covered in litter, most of our bus stops are just signs on the side of the road without a bench or a shelter, and on event days, you're hard-pressed at busy intersections to find a cop or an event staff to help pedestrians cross safely or make sure the traffic is unimpeded. These items may seem small to others, but for those of us who actually live here in this neighborhood, it's about our quality of life. We pay our taxes, we submit our HUB requests, but instead of addressing those issues, we're here talking about another big dollar project designed by lobbyists for the benefit of people who don't live here. No one in this neighborhood wants NASCAR. No one wants the noise. No one wants the traffic, the air pollution. What we do want are sidewalks, paved roads, painted crosswalks, street trees, affordable housing, clean parks. We want our tax dollars spent on things that improve our neighborhood and our quality of life. So when it comes to putting NASCAR in the middle of our neighborhood, I employ our policymakers to vote like you live here. And in the words of Nancy Reagan, just say no. Thank you. Have addressed two minutes. Uh, Daryl Daryl Palmore, 4712 Hesse Road, 37122. Uh, I'm not going to talk on nostalgia. I think that's been touched on enough. I will say read the room. If you look around, two-thirds of the room is red, and that's for a reason. You have an entire neighborhood. Hold on, hold on. You have an entire neighborhood here in white, and they still don't outnumber the red. Um, as far as the racing... Like somebody else said, it's going to be here. We have a resolution. Racing's not going to stop. It's whether or not we put the money into it to make it better. People complain about the sound. I don't hear any complaints about the soccer stadium noise or when they have concerts and these people over here have a concert in their backyard that they don't want. Nobody complains about that. Nobody complains about traffic or crowd from soccer. It's just a opposition because they don't want racing. It's not because they don't like traffic or crowds or noise. It's because they don't want racing. Hold on. And somebody said something about the billion, billionaire lying owners. Let's talk about John Ingram. He said he was for this place until he got his soccer stadium for free, and then he's not for it anymore. Who lied? We have it on record that he lied. And the track's age, the first race was held here, the first auto race was held here 118 years ago. Pick out a neighbor who's lived here that long. If they can't, if they, if you have lived here 118 years, show me your fountain of youth. Thank you. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Hi there, Matt Greer, 749 Hamilton Avenue, 37203, uh, which would Houston basically. Um, so I want to address several points that have been made by proponents tonight, and I think they boil down to uh, some erroneous financial statements, nostalgia, and whataboutisms. I'll start with the financial. You will never convince me that taxpayers should be on the hook for potential debt from operating expenses by a private entity. You want the profit, you take the risk, period. End of story. And this is a 30-year deal going into business with an entity that is losing numbers. The financial prognosis is downward. How is that a good deal for Nashville? Now, let's skip to nostalgia. I get nostalgia. It's a powerful motivator. We all live by it. 
I'm, I'm not anti-racing. I'm not anti-fun. But you have a choice to go to another NASCAR track that's already in this area. I don't have a choice to move my house. I only own one property. And I did not buy into this place thinking that NASCAR was going to move in and set up shop in my backyard. Finally, I want to address whataboutisms. I hear a lot of people talking about the soccer stadium. Yes, there's a soccer stadium here. Thank you for noticing. We are already overburdened by that. And this will only compound all of those issues with more traffic, more drunkenness, more parking issues. So, no, I do not think this is a good deal. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank you. Okay, just, we've been at it an hour. Just want to give everybody a chance to stretch, take a breath. Remember, uh, if you've come in, bathrooms are in the back, water to the side. All right, name, address, two minutes. Lynn Newcomb, 338 Blackman Road, Nashville 37211. I sat outside of my house the other night and heard Beyonce. I live 10 miles from downtown. I heard Taylor Swift. If you've never been to a Bristol race, I've been when it was the old days, but I've been since they made it a bowl. If you're outside that track, you don't hear racing. It is a straight up noise. As far as parking, um, like the others have said, I came down here to the first soccer game out of curiosity. There was nobody that could get out of their driveways in this neighborhood, but I just mainly wanted to speak to the noise. There's noise all over Nashville. People get over it. Thank you. Name, address, two minutes. My name is Dana Terabessi. I'm at 1715 Allison down the street, 37203. Um, this, you know, this, my comments are, have absolutely nothing to do with wanting to tear down a racetrack. I don't like racing, none of that. I don't mind racing. I bought my home over a decade ago. I've lived and worked in this neighborhood over 15 years. It's not the problem. The problem I have with this is NASCAR expansion and the, this financial proposal for BMS. It's not been vetted. I appreciate that this gentleman is taking notes because Matthew, who came to our SNAP meeting, took not one note. In fact, we asked him to please take notes so he could take it back to you and anyone else who could potentially listen to the neighbors and listen to what might happen to our quality of life. And that was not done. If you have some notes, that would be great if we could actually hear what you might have heard from us because not one thing has been incorporated in this proposal. The financial piece of this proposal, as you've heard, it reads just like the 1996 Titans deal, and we're going to be on the hook for that. I, I do have probably, I hope I have 30 years left in my life, and I hope I'm still in my home here at that time. I bet you that that is not going to serve, that use is not going to survive. We are going to basically build, if I count up the number of events and you're telling me, oh, there's fewer racing events, fewer racing, you know, racetrack, like practice times. Okay, great. But there's 75 private events that you said 500 to 1,000 people could potentially come. There's also 20 plus CBC events. Who knows how many people will come to those? We are basically building another tourist attraction in our neighborhood, which 118 years ago, there were not this many Nashvilleians living in this neighborhood or any of these surrounding neighborhoods. We have a lot more housing. And you know why? Because the city made a commitment. They went through the whole process of Nashville Next and they created additional housing because our city was growing. I love that people keep saying that 70% of Nashvilleians wanted racing to happen here. Again, I'm fine with racing, but that is not a true statement. 43,000 of 61,000 people who voted said yes. 43,000 people that is Thank not you. representative of the national. Thank you. Hey, I've addressed two minutes. Hi, my name is James Faulkner. Um, my address is 2203 Rankin Drive, um, 37037. As just a 10-year-old, I already have several great memories here for Na here at Nashville Fairground Speedway. From watching my dad race in a limited late model class when I was just four years old to racing in my, a bandolero myself and getting my star in a legend car soon. Nashville Fairground Speedway is the ultimate track to learn how to race. It is perfect for the challenge of man and machine. So many famous drivers have gotten their starts in the racing world here at the fairgrounds, starting in the early 1900s. Early 1900s, the track was a dirt field that held horse racing events. One interesting story I recently learned is that in 1920, a 32-year-old champion horse named John R. Gentry was buried in the infield where he still rests today. Although the grave is unmarked, horse racing continued until the late 1950s. In 1957, the track was converted into a half-mile paved oval when it began as an official NASCAR series track. In 1959, the NASCAR Grand National Race of 200 laps was held here. 
In the 1960s, the track held some of the most well-known drivers, including what's called the, the Alabama Gang, Bobby Allison, Donnie Allison, and one of our very own, Red Farmer. Cuckoo Marlin was the first back-to-back -back champion at this historic track in 1965 and in 1966. While lots of exciting things happened here at the fairgrounds, of course, not everything was sunshine and rainbows. In 1963, the famous Tiny Lund got into a huge crash, taking out part of the wall at, at the Nashville 400, now known as the famous All-American 400. Unfortunately, just two years later, in 1965, a raging fire burned the grandstands at the state fair. The fairgrounds held many drivers who would go on to NASCAR's highest division, including one of the Alabama gang members. Thank you. Thank you. This time. Thanks, man. Name, address, two minutes. Um, Elizabeth Tan Hewlett, Southgate Avenue, 37203. That's Wedgwood, Houston. I'm going to make just two points tonight because I believe you all have the supporting rationale behind the opposition to the BMS proposal, ranging from environmental concerns, noise, lack of community input, lack of adequate infrastructure, and several pending pieces of legislation, or litigation rather. My first point is that if I were to bring a business proposal this problematic financially to my executive team, my professional acumen and integrity would be brought into question because a like proposal in my space would clearly not have been brought forth in the spirit of serving in the best interests of our patient population, which is who at the end of the day, who I am ultimately tasked on working on behalf of. This begs the question tonight, who are you working for? And obviously I'm asking this of the local representatives. Whose interests are you working on behalf of? Is it tourists, BMS, Nashville residents, your own financial gain? And this leads to my second point. It must be noted that the permanent residents of Nashville's urban core are critical in maintaining Nashville's thriving economic ecosystem, which by conservative estimates accounts for one third of the state's total economy. However, it's no secret that it is now incredibly difficult on a daily basis to get around the city, to get to our jobs, to take care of our children and to meet our obligations. And this is without any special events going on. So I'll close by saying that continuing the course of building for tourism and special interests without addressing the fundamental needs of the city population, notably the lack of effective transit, is a great way to deplete the residential base in Oak Hill, Green Hills, Waverly, Belmont, 12 South, Wedgwood, Houston, Chestnut Hill, all the way down to Hillsborough West End, because we all hear the races today and spend an exorbitant amount of time in traffic. But I truly hope that is not what happens. I hope you all choose to work in collaboration with us and in the interest of us, actual Nashville residents in this area. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This is the this is a surrogate speech for the additional two minutes. Okay, go for it. Each and every one of these famous NASCAR drivers not only started their career here and used it for their training grounds, but then sent their children here then turned around and sent their children here to learn how to race. I feel honored to be able to race at this track where so many legends have raced. Uh, and as a 10-year-old boy, my hope and prayer is that Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway is here for many years to come. I would hate to see the fairgrounds disappear because I hope to continue racing here, making memories and hopefully racing on the big track one day. Thanks. All right, uh, name, address, two minutes. Kelly Toon, Allison Place, 37203, Nashville native. Um, it is time to start listening to the majority of Nashville residents who want Nashville to not only be a great place to visit, but also a great place to live again. There is a lot of misleading and false information being communicated about the current BMS proposal, what is required under the existing charter, and intentions of those of us who oppose. The focus on this issue has to be on facts, not on passion and emotion. I, along with many others, am not opposed for local racing, have actually enjoyed my um, times that I have attended races. I am not trying to get the existing racetrack torn down and not opposed to renovating the current racetrack and its ability, uh, facilities. I am opposed to a second 30,000 seat capacity venue in the middle of multiple neighborhoods, no restrictions to the number and types of events hosted at the new venue, and the majority of the funds for the new facility being Metro-backed revenue bonds. I am opposed to 
NASCAR racing in the middle of densely populated neighborhoods. I am opposed to a biased sound study with insufficient proposed solution for uh, the type of events and racing that would be allowed under the new proposal. I'm opposed to turning over more metro property to big business and developers to capitalize on national entertainment industry and diversify its company's portfolio. And I'm opposed to metro prioritizing yet another entertainment venue before addressing the needs of our city, our neighborhood, and our quality of life for residents. In a poll just released yesterday, over 60% of Nashville opposed the lease deal. This barely passed by the fair board by only one vote. Supporters felt the need to pass legislation changing the charter, lowering vote threshold for demolition on the fairgrounds, resulting in multiple pending lawsuits. BMS requested the Sports Authority to defer their vote last week after the Sports Authority expressed concern about the proposal. There is simply too many caution flags with this deal, and we didn't have to host an event and rally to get the two-thirds of the people to attend this event. Thank you. Hey, but that's two minutes. All right, guys, I'm not much of a speaker, but I felt like I needed to. Needed to. Uh, I came here, uh, just started just, raising uh, here. Can you do name and address, please? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Okay. My name is Donnie Kaler. I live at 2400 Maxwell Road, Antioch, zip code 37013. And like I said, I'm I started racing here in 1961. My son started racing after I did, and I still have four nephews active in racing down here at the fairground. And I appreciate what this gentleman in Bristol is trying to do for us. I heard somebody talking over here a while ago about we got enough tourist stuff, we don't need to put money in more. Well, this place was here before all of this other. Why not take care of it and make it beautiful? You know, this place is for the people that's here in Nashville. It's not necessarily trying to draw other people in, maybe for your big races. And when the big races, look how much money that brings in Nashville. You can't get a hotel room. You can't get in the restaurant. Big bucks. But the people that's against it, I'll say 80% of them don't even live around here. And I lived around here most of my life. Noise never bothered me. But the people are talking and not making sense. I, I don't understand. I'm just an old country boy, and I don't understand a lot. But this is this is crazy. Thank you. All right. All right. Name address, two minutes. My name is Kate Klaus. I live at 540C Moore Avenue, uh, zip code 37203. I'm a homeowner. I live around the corner, and I've lived in my home for nearly 10 years. I'd first of all like to say thank you for allowing us this opportunity for everyone to be able to share their opinion. Um, like many of my neighbors, I'm strongly opposed to the proposed racetrack expansion. I have serious issues, um, as many have raised, with the noise, pollution, traffic, um, parking, and quality of life impact. One thing I think that hasn't really come up yet is that part of the fun of going to a NASCAR event is to enjoy a whole day, maybe even a weekend at the races with camping and tailgating, but there is no space for that here in this rapidly developing urban core. Where there is a perfect spot for that that already exists is the Nashville Super Speedway. And in fact, that's why camping is available right beside the speedway. A second NASCAR track is unnecessary. And I feel like this often happens in these community events. This is at least my third one I've attended, where there's this false dichotomy between supporting soccer or supporting NASCAR. And in the neighborhood, we feel the impact of both of those. We already have this brand new 30,000 capacity venue in our neighborhood. How much more can one neighborhood take? That's why four neighborhood groups have joined efforts to oppose this expansion. And I implore the council members who are in this room to please listen to your neighbors and oppose this. Thank you. Thank you. Name address, two minutes. Jim Jordan, 510 Leanne Drive, 37211. Uh, native Nashville, 40-year uh, participant at this racetrack and the flea market and everything else that's ever gone on this property besides this. This first time here. Nice place. Uh, we've given and we've given and we've given. We've, there's, there's no room anymore. They keep squeezing us into this little pile up here. 
It's time for us to get some. We need, we put it, we, we've done everything everybody's asked for. Mufflers, less race days, we don't, we don't race a third what we used to. It's time for us. It's our turn to get something for us. We gave for this. This is a nice place. It's, it's our turn. Thank you. Thank you. Name address, two minutes. Francesca Wolf, address is 1108 Chapel Avenue, Nashville 37206. I'd like to direct my comments to the Metro Council members, any that are in attendance, any that will listen to this, any that will hear about this. Um, I think the polls have shown that Nashville residents are overwhelmingly opposed to this deal. And so I would caution any Metro Council members that vote for it, think of what your district wants and think about whether they will want to keep you if you vote for this. Thank you. Thank you. Name, address, two minutes. Hello, I'm Lisa Kleiss. I live at 981 Murfreesboro Pike, uh, apartment 132, Nashville, Tennessee, 37217. And thank you, Mr. Codwell. I appreciate all you've done and everything that's going on. And the little kid that wrote, read the thing kind of took it away from me. I pretty much was going to talk about the history of the place. So, and the count, the the council, the mayor, the somebody has got to call a special meeting. Let's complete this. Let's get this done. That track deserves better than what it what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Name address two minutes. My name is Nathan Harris. I live in five thirty one A Moore Avenue three seven two zero three. It's right over here. Um, I really don't like doing this and I don't like talking like this, uh, but thank you, Colby, for making this happen. Cause that's one of the other reasons we're here. It's because you requested this meeting if I'm, if I'm, unless I'm wrong, I could be, but others tried to stop it from happening because they didn't want to hear it anymore. And that's why we have to keep coming out and keep saying why we're here. And that's why I came. I can't talk about the noise anymore. I know y'all are tired of hearing it too. I'm from Middle Tennessee. I grew up loving NASCAR. I've been to Talladega. I've been to Atlanta. I cried when Earnhardt died. Y'all got screwed. You did. And that sucks. But this deal is bad. This is not the way to do this. I know this is the answer because it seems like it is to y'all, but it's not the way to do it. And I'm sorry because I don't know you, but you're doing this to make money. You're not doing this as a benefit and you're taking advantage of this situation that looks like a prime opportunity. This is a money grab. If I've ever seen one before, it is a bad deal. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I've addressed two minutes. Play Greenfield, 7546 Memorial Drive, Old Hickory, Tennessee. Um, I raced in the NASCAR Camping World, World, World Truck Series. I got my start at this racetrack. Uh, my parents never worried about where I was at night because I was working on my race car. I have two kids in the back of the room that in 10 years will be racing on this racetrack. Um, people, I want to address a few concerns from the other side. People worried about the future of NASCAR. Youth racing is exploding right now. It's extremely healthy, going to be a bright future for years to come. Those who think that the National Super Speedway is the same thing as the fairgrounds. Let me tell you, as much as I support the National Super Speedway, it is not the fairgrounds. It's like saying that country music is the same thing as rap music. We run, we even race totally different vehicles at the super speedway as we do here. It's totally different. It's night and day. Um, I've uh, been here my whole life without wearing ear protection. I can still hear. I've breathed these wonderful smelling fumes my whole life. I can still breathe. And, um, you know, the, the question is, why do we not want the racetrack? The people worried about pollution. I'm assuming they rode their bikes here tonight. Um, if we don't like making money, then don't do the deal. If we support football, if we support baseball, if we support soccer, if we support concerts and all kinds of people down on Broadway, we should support racing too. Thank you. Dave, address, two minutes. Hi, uh, my name is Becca. I live at 505 Southgate Avenue, right over there, 37203. And I bought my house in Wedgwood, Houston, and I've had so many people say to me, well, you knew the track was there when you bought your house. You are precisely right. I did. I knew that there was a track that had charming stock car truck races, sometimes a little noisy, but I appreciated them. And I, I knew that it did not disrupt my neighborhood. It did not have people parking all over the place because they generally were not 
30,000 people attending those races. But I also know that NASCAR stopped running at the Fairground Speedway in 1984, almost 40 years ago. And in these last 40 years, Wedgwood Houston and the neighborhoods surrounding the Fairground Speedway have been transformed into family-friendly communities where people have invested their hard-earned money and created neighborhoods where we can live and walk and enjoy time with our neighbors, walk our dogs, and enjoy a reasonable peace and quiet of living in such a neighborhood. But now Bristol Motor Speedway and their supporters want to disregard those 40 years of progress by turning the clock back back to 1984 to bring NASCAR back to a neighborhood that has evolved beyond being an ideal location for a NASCAR track. To be clear, I think most of us who are opposed to having a 30,000 seat NASCAR track developed in our neighborhood are not anti-NASCAR. I have flown my dad to NASCAR races for his birthday. I've attended many NASCAR races. We're not opposed to having racing at its current level at the fairgrounds. We are opposed to bearing the burden of what's going to come with a 30,000 seat track. Lack of parking, which has been documented in studies that have been commissioned, congestion, crowding, we don't have enough sidewalk infrastructure. There are a lot of problems that have not been addressed. And so we appreciate the fact that everybody is nostalgic and they love NASCAR, but we just want to be able to live in peace in our neighborhood as it is without bringing in a 30,000 seat track. Thank you. Name address, two minutes. Good evening, my name is Patrick Cohane. I live at 3029 Delta Queen Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37214. That's in the 15th Council District. Uh, Jeff Syracuse is my council person. And Mr. Sledge, I appreciate you having the community meeting. Mr. Caldwell, I appreciate your presentation. And all the other council people and candidates here, I appreciate your time tonight as well. Um, just a little bit of history about me. Uh, I moved to Nashville in 1987. I graduated college a week and a half before I moved here. So all the young people here, you will get old if you stay in Nashville. It's, it's going to happen. I, I attended my first race here at the Speedway in April 1988. At that time, they raced every single week except for two weeks during the summer when it was fanfare, which everybody here knows is CMA Fest now, and during the state fair. Um, that was the only four weeks they didn't race from middle of March all the way into October. And then they concluded the season with the All-American 400. Um, I was even here for an enduro race where over 100 cars were on that little track out there. Um, it was a fun race to watch. Um, if you come for the wrecks, you got your money's worth that day. Um, I was here two years ago when the SRX race which was broadcast nationally on CBS radio or CBS television, and the grandstands were full. It took me 15 minutes to get out of the parking lot. So, you know, as far as traffic goes, it can be managed. Um, I'm a working man. Um, I'm not wealthy, but I'm not struggling either. Uh, I know when it comes to investments, I have to make good decisions. Um, but I do know that if I have the option of spending $40 um, and not getting anything in return, or if I invest $100, $100 and I got a chance to get that back, um, I'm going to take that $100 uh, if, it's, if it's one way or the other. Thank you. Um, sometimes. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, name, address, two minutes. <laughs> My name is Betty Smith, and I live at 2101 Lindell Avenue. Nashville 37204, about a mile and a half from here. I moved there in the early 1980s, 1983, because nobody else wanted to live there because of all the noise from the racing. I could afford to move there, so I did. They moved out in 1984. 1989, I bought a house over there. Then it became, instead of profit over people, it became people over profit. And now you want to bring back profit over people you talk about the parking even with this soccer we have to get tags of me and my because they park a mile and a half from here and block our driveway we've had to call the police to get them from stop them from parking we don't want to have you told when you come out and your car go to stop them from parking and blocking our driveway this is a i don't know whether or not it'll be a good idea financially in the future or anything i just know when I was here in 1983, 
and the noise. I didn't have to come to the races. I stepped in my front yard and I was at the races. When they left in 1984, they were still racing here, but I could use my yard. People over profit. So I just want the council to think about people and not profit. Thank you. All right. Name address, two minutes. My name is James Evans, uh, Springview Drive, uh, zip code 37214. Uh, I've been coming to this stretch track since I was a little, a little child myself. Um, came as, as a family. Uh, there's many times, as I talked to someone else earlier, uh, many a hot wheels have been pushed around on the seats in the grandstands, and it seems a family time, it's a bonding time between fathers, sons, daughters, and that's one thing we don't have a whole lot of in Nashville anymore as far as that. We have beer joints downtown. We have concerts that people can go to. But family events, other than parks, sometimes is a dying thing that happens here. This is a community thing that happens. We're all tourists in this room, whether or not we believe we are or not. Every time we travel, the places we go to are, are because they were built for people to come to. Nashville is a tourist city. We are the supporters of the tourist city. We're, we're providing a, an avenue for people to be able to come to our town, help pay for things that are we're used to having in our town that the people that live here would have to pay for if we didn't have the means for people coming in to be able to pay for those things. Um, racing, we have new racing downtown around the Nissan Stadium right now. So that's something new that was brought to Nashville that shows there's racing in downtown Nashville that is available for people that like racing. This is another avenue that gives people the chance to start a, a career in racing, work their way up, and maybe one day race at the super speedway out in Wilson County. But the money during that time is brought to Nashville. Do we hope uh, Bristol makes money on this deal? It would be silly to think that they're not gonna make money in this deal. Why would anybody invest money if they're not, if they're not planning on making something back out of it? Where's our return? So the people in the city, can get a return by coming to the events, enjoying the events, and experiencing the things that the people in, that in the knows what it's about to experience. But Nashville, sound-wise, I live near the airport. I do fine with the noise. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll do a second. Okay. Sorry, doing a time check. Just a reminder, folks, well, a couple things. One, if your feet are tired, there are seats. Um, second, please remember, address the three of us up here. All right, name, address, two minutes. Lindsay Leak, 2908 Clifton Avenue, 37209. And while I live on the west side, this is where I found my community. Um, and not only that, I am a teacher in Metro Nashville Public Schools. And kids, the future of our community, aren't excited about NASCAR. They... NASCAR is their grandparents thing, which is evidenced by the speakers we've had tonight, where the majority of them are over 50. Okay, so these kids, they care about, excuse me, I'm sorry. Hold on. They care about the environment. They care about being able to afford to live in a city. I know students that have to move schools, move their community, their friends, because bringing all this big stuff in, everybody's buying Airbnbs and renting them out, they can't afford to live in their own city. And these are the kids who want to say, I'm a native Nashvilleian, I grew up here, and want to stay here. Also, vehicle racing isn't an accessible pastime for our youth. It takes space, it takes noise, it takes money. It's easy for them to go pick out a soccer ball and go play at the soccer fields right here next to the big soccer park, right? It's easy for them to go on walks, to go play on a playground. Why don't we turn our fairgrounds into a space that can actually be used by our youth and utilized to create change? On a whole nother note, I don't know what these people are talking about, parking and traffic not being an issue here, but I'm over here every single day. And when there's a game, I can't go to the park with my dog. The city or somebody that gives the time away to these corporations to have their events. And yes, I'm including the soccer stadium. It's only going to get worse. The same amount of events does not mean the same amount of people. There will be more people here. There is absolutely no parking in this area. And it's going to be an absolute nightmare for this community. And that needs to be addressed. Thank you. Hold on. Everybody's deep breath. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Mike Gilbert, 3055 Greer Road, Gillisville, Tennessee, 37072. <clears throat> if anybody knows Greer Road, 
they know it's within a quarter mile of a uh, drag strip. When I bought my house, my real estate agent told me that I was going to be a quarter mile from the drag strip. He invited me to come out and listen. It's 10 times louder than that racetrack. I mean, it's, it's, it's loud. But I put fans on. I might have to turn the news up a little bit, but I live with it. I don't buy a house or property that I don't research what's going on around it. I'll go drive, make sure it's a, a good drive home back and forth. Long story short, I've worked fanfare since the first fanfare was held at the fairgrounds. Used to make a lot of good money doing different concerts and different events when it was the fairgrounds or what we all know as the fairgrounds. I've watched over the years, I'm, I'm also wondering how much money have we lost because they won't update the fairgrounds. They keep building everything around us, giving all of what we considered our fairgrounds and our property. 90% of us in red shirts can't afford one of these condos out here. Why would you build a condo beside a soccer stadium and a, and a racetrack if you wasn't expecting noise? Okay. So we'll get past that. We'll go into the fact that Fanfare left, and I watched the producers and the, and the executives talk, uh, from RCA and different record companies talk about the facility is run down. People don't want to sit on those bleachers that's been there for 40 years. They want some new bleachers, some new seats. So they left. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Name, address, two minutes. Hello, my name is Aaron Howard. I am a Nashville native. I live at 1208 Third Avenue South. I graduated from TSU with a degree in economics and finance. Uh, why are we here is the question I've been hearing. It's because y'all aren't profitable. We're here because y'all can't afford your own improvements. Your own company is delinquent. That's why we're here. We're here because you're asking for $164 million of public money. We're here because BMS does not want to invest in Nashville. Not a cent from BMS is coming from Nashville. We've seen their, their rosy rent payments it doesn't come close to paying us back. Where is our return on investment? If we're going to be partners, we should be partners and get equal return. But that's not happening. I'm going to take a second to breathe. I'm not giving up my time. Uh, yeah, I have lived in Nashville. My almost my entire life, except for a few years in Memphis and in uh, Knoxville. And I have always been in audio of this racetrack. It is loud. I live just over the hill when on the worst days, when it's races, I, it sounds like they're racing around my house. I am not against BMS coming and investing in Nashville and being a private profiteer company, but they need to invest their own money. This needs to be their thing, not ours. Y'all aren't profitable, so we don't need to be risking ourselves for y'all. I'm sorry. And that's my time. Thank you. All right, name and just two minutes. Wayne Domi, I reside at 101 Cherokee Place in the United Nations of Antioch. I'm a recovering council member. I've fought for this property since 2009. I want to thank you for your willingness to invest in our city, for this fairground has taken $41 million of unfunded deferred maintenance off of the taxpayers' hands. I want to thank you for your efforts to improve the parking issues, the parking issues that were created by the money grab for this facility we're standing in, the biggest money grab in the history of this city, where we get $50 million of free land to a millionaire, a billionaire, and his buddies to develop for 99 years. You're asking for 30-year 30, 30 lease. We appreciate that willingness to work on such a small compensation time to recover poop your investment. The, uh, I've heard folks complain that money grab here, I've heard folks claim that it was unfair, it was inappropriately decided. My college roommate was a psychology major, major and we talked about something called projection. 
There's a thing where when you're doing something wrong, you know it's wrong, you project it on those that you're opposed, so it makes you feel better. There's a lot of projection going on here. The fairgrounds is protected under the Metro Charter. I helped pass that referendum. It's protected under the charter of Davidson County, which is also part of the state law, the private acts of the state of Tennessee, which is adopted in the Metropolitan Charter. It requires all the venues on this property to generate revenue for the fairgrounds property. You're paying rent, unlike the facility here. They're taking half of the parking revenue they receive on this property that was the fair board's revenue, giving half of it back to the fair board in the name of, of rent. We appreciate your willingness to pay actual rent and your willingness to support this track. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the time to speak. Thank you. Address two minutes. Hi, my name is Stephanie Levinson. I live at 923 Halcyon Avenue, Nashville 37204, just about a mile and a half away from here. Um, I'm actually here as a representative for the 12 South Neighborhood Association. Uh, we just want to show our opposition uh, based on a few things. Several of them you've already heard, um, but I just want to recap real quick. I won't take my two minutes. Uh, first is the financial aspects of the deal. Uh, people feel that they don't have enough transparency in the deal and are a little concerned about some of the uh, bonds that are taken out in uh, with, you know, backed by taxpayers. Uh, the noise pollution. Obviously, it's a lot harder to deal with being a little closer proximity, but it's still quite loud all the way in 12 South. Um, and concerns about it only getting louder are valid, I think. Um, air pollution, obviously, is a concern. An increase in traffic, an increase in just overall trash, and the concern that there is not enough infrastructure at this time to even support this building as far as parking and people getting to and from concerns about just how it's not even ready for this building let alone to add another 30,000 seat uh, venue so that's what I came here to say thank you for your time thank you name address two minutes Hi, my name is Alice Rowley. I live at 1400 Villa Place here in District 17 and am and no stranger to uh, conversations that we've had about public land here, Councilman. So thank you for having us. I just want to make sure that we are all very clear on the record of the will of the voters as folks have visited on that. In 1996, 60% of voters in Davidson County approved the Titans to have a stadium. And this council has spent an inordinate amount of time holding up that referendum from 1996. But in 2011, more than 70% of Nashville voters voted to support a charter amendment to protect racing here at the fairgrounds. And while the will of the voters may be an inconvenient truth for many developers, their voices still matter to me. For the improvements in safety, for the improvements in the long-term financial obligation to the city, and for honoring the will of the voters and the charter of our city, I support the Bristol Motor Speedway. Thank you. Thank you. May I address two minutes? Hi there, my name is Krista Sullivan. I walked here tonight from my house on Southgate Avenue. My zip code is 37203. And even though it took me less than five minutes to walk here tonight, I have never once been approached by Bristol Motor Speedway for my opinion or for any community input. I've never received a flyer advertising or an invitation to a community event. I'm not sure who they asked when they say that they've held community forums, but it wasn't the neighbors that live here. I knew about the racetrack when I bought my house, and I don't like it when people say that I didn't or that we shouldn't have moved here. We knew about the racetrack when we moved here. Every single one of my neighbors did, but the racetrack that is being proposed with this expansion is not the same. Not a single one of us as neighbors are advocating for the racetrack to go away. I've never heard a neighbor say that, I don't believe that they think that. I know that I don't think that. Not a single one of us is advocating to tear down your historic speedway. We're just not. What we are trying to say is that we would like some community input. We've never once asked for the speedway to turn down 
And Bristol Motors is proposing many, many things. But what they aren't doing is restoring the historic speedway. This is not preserving. This is an almost entire a teardown and a rebuild. This proposal doesn't preserve the history of those who have driven in from outside of Nashville and have loved this, race, this racetrack for years. It, if you want to restore this speedway, you should be restoring it to its original glory, not tearing it down and putting up something entirely different. The neighbors that live here would ask for the same thing. All right, thank you. All right, Dave, address two minutes. Tony Watson, 539 Fairlane Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37211. And I repeat what Dwayne Dominey said, you know, recovering councilman. I repeat Alice Rowley. And also, <clears throat> Mr. Cardwell will appreciate you having us here today for this reason. And we know that the tax dollars will not come from the taxpayers. The most of the money will come from y'all, and the 17000 and then the other monies that y'all will be putting in the Speedway. A lot of people have said tonight that, that this is a money grab, and it's totally not that at all. This place is a part of my fabric. I've been coming here since I was eight years old. I live 3,000 feet from here. I'm 66 years old. I've been running the Speedway for 13 years, and I continue to push to make our fairgrounds one of the best in the whole wide world. We are the best Speedway in the United States of America, number yeah. one. And the other part to it is, is that we, our fairgrounds will be renewed by uh, SMI and BMS. They will renew it. I'd like to know and let y'all know that 12 of the speedways that Bristol Motor Speedway and SMI have right now, they have great facilities. None of them have been out of business. They're all beautiful, and they make great money for every city that they're in to make an economic impact for them cities. And when Bristol opens, comes here for NASCAR, there'll only be one race every other year. How much is that to ask after we've been working for three years and 13 years to keep this here? As Dwayne said, we have a charter here. That should be respected as metro charters should be expected, respected as we are. And I hope in the future that our next councilman will work with us for the next eight years to help us with our speedway. And I appreciate everybody coming today, and I, and I hope everybody makes this happen, and I appreciate you immensely, and thank you very much. Thank you. Real, real quick, just, to, just a time check here. So we are at 725. <clears throat> We are, I think we have basically just about the even numbers on each side here to, to finish up in the next 15, 20 minutes. So with everybody's permission, we'll go, we'll go a little bit over to 730. For folks who are in line, just stay in, that, stay in line, but th then we're going to cap it right there. I think, I think we've got like six on each side. Left. Okay, here we go. Name, address, two minutes. Yes, my name is Edward Caldwell, and I... Uh, I talked to somebody on open line the other night and she referred me to go to the council again and talk to them about it. So I'm here talking about it. When I first heard about them redoing the speedway, I had no opinion. I'm not a race car person, but anything that can bring Nashville money, I'm all for it. I mean, that's was my attitude. I mean, you know, if, if we can get money off of it, it's a good thing. But see, the thing of it is, ever since then, I've had to deal, and, and I live at a high-rise, elderly high-rise, about, I'm going to say, a half a block away from Gallatin Road in Madison, Chippenden Towers. I can't sleep at night. I hear these loud cars, loud motorcycles, and loud trucks come down the street, revving the engines up. It's like a motor parade. It really is. And the council don't seem like, I don't know, they laugh about it. And then the police department says, we don't have enough police officers to do anything. So nothing's never done. I feel sorry for the people who's got to put up with a noise because I understand where they're coming from. You know, and I, I, I heard it takes going like not 50% of the noise out. I don't know how much difference that would make. But still yet, it's a very noisy thing. And we have noise everywhere. That's true. I've seen both sides of the issue, talking to people here on both sides. And we have noises everywhere. But why not? And I heard it's already been done. It's already been done. Put it before the uh, 
the voters again. It hadn't been done in a while, and times had changed. A lot of things had changed since the last vote. Put it before the voters again. They thank could you. vote one way or the other. Thank you. Thank All you. right, thank you. All right, name address, two minutes. Tina Bolden, Wimpole Drive, 37211. Uh, born and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. Believe it or not, I'm 62. Hard to believe, I know. Um, grew up coming to the track. So just like NASCAR, I was here first. Um, these same, the, I've heard questions about the infrastructure and taxes. Those same concerns came up before the sounds came to town. Our elected officials at that time said, come on in. So same concerns about infrastructure and taxes came up before NFL came to town. Our elected officials said, come on in, we got you. We're, well, we're Nashville, we're a welcoming city, come on in. Before this soccer stadium was built and came to town, NASCAR was here first, but our elected officials said, come on in. Thank you. I want to say thank you to those across the aisle who have reminded everyone here that NASCAR was here prior to 1984 because you have helped drive home my point. NASCAR was here first. Um, to those of you that have talked about moving into the neighborhood in the past 10 to 20 years and, and how it's impacting your home life, the racetrack and NASCAR was here first. I'm not going to say you knew there was a track here before you bought here because y'all said y'all don't want to hear that, so I'm not going to say it. Um, but I will say that this is not, we're not talking about a tourist attraction here. We're talking about a track that has been supported by native Nashvilleians for over 100 years. I want to thank Bristol Motor Speedway for considering Nashville. I applaud you, and, and, and there are a large majority of native Nashvilleans are so thankful for you. To the young ladies that have said, to the one specifically that said, most of them are over 50, you're right, we are. But my children and my grandchildren Thank aren't. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Name, address, two minutes. Good evening. Uh, my name is Christopher Lundgren. I live at 1005 Caldwell Avenue, 37204. As I think you know, I've been reaching out to you for a long time uh, in opposition to uh, the upgrade of the track or the expansion of the track uh, to NASCAR. And I heard a gentleman at the back here when one of the previous speakers in this line uh, became upset saying, now, don't get angry now. And I think the, the, the clear distinction between uh, the location of people who live in this, uh, you know, where this line lives and then there were, to be fair, uh, a few people who live nearby uh, in the support line. Uh, but that distinction can't be ignored. Um, I'm a high school teacher. I teach history, among other things. But I also teach economics. And there's a basic concept in economics of negative and positive externalities. And the simple fact is, is that the people who live in 37203 and 4 will bear the brunt of those negative externalities, all of which have been amply uh, categorized. Uh, cataloged uh, over this time. The noise, uh, the internal combustion engine, uh, sorry, the, the, the roar of soccer fans is no competition to the roar of multiple internal combustion engines, right? The, the noise is, of course, one of the main issues. It was the issue that drove me to write you in opposition to this. Um, I did not know when I moved here that there was a track. I moved here 15 years ago. It didn't occur to me to ask whether a racetrack existed in the heart of a city. I've lived in several cities, including near fairgrounds in Springfield, Illinois, and it just would never have occurred to me to ask whether that was a thing. Regardless, the people in this line will bear the brunt of the noise, the increased traffic, um, the disruption to our daily lives. Those who enjoy NASCAR have a place to enjoy NASCAR, the positive externalities of exactly this thing. There is a place to enjoy the things that you enjoy already, 12 miles away or however far away Thank it you. is. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, hey, my, name, my name is Jerry Coble, 13, uh, 3115 North Graycroft, Madison, Tennessee. I've talked to y'all several times. Mr. Sledge, you said to address you. Laura Walmack, address you. Y'all have told us time and time again, if we, if the soccer field come here, and to revamp this place, it would be good for the racetrack. You would help and support the racetrack. 
That is not what I'm hearing you doing. Let me make sure that y'all know what the finances was of this property here. We gave, all y'all gave 10 acres of prime land to a billionaire, to a billionaire, all of you. Gave 10 acres of prime land to a billionaire. Let's give it to this billionaire if y'all want to give 10 acres away again. What's the problem? You're talking about finances, but that's a big, big deal. What's 10 acres of land in Metro Davidson County worth? Think about it, okay? But you did. You swore to me numerous of times, me meeting at every meeting that y'all had, planning, zoning, this, facilities about how we could get in and out of this racetrack and all this stuff, the traffic studies that y'all done. And I kept telling you, you got our CNS railroad tracks you got to deal with. We're going to have major traffic problems. We had 4,000 parking places here. You took every one of them away. All this is doing, you're taking it, you're like an anaconda around this property. And you've took and squeezed and squeezed and squeezed the life out of it. You, you run off all the flea market vendors, or most of them. You run off all of our shows. Everything, everything's out in Wilson County now. Yeah, they're making the money because they got the fair out there. Well, we got a carnival here. So what we got, we have nothing. You, but you told me to my face, you and you, I know, told me this was going to be good. This soccer field would be good for the racetrack. And it's not. And you're sitting up there misleading people. The, the man that owns this soccer field or stadium, he, on oh, YouTube it, look at him. See what he said. He said it would be great for him. And it ain't. Thank, thank you. Thanks for your time. All right, just a quick, let's do a, a quick check before we go through. So we're, we're, we're about 7.35. I have about five or six people on each line when we started, and then we've moved to in a few people. So here's, here's, hold on. So look, I want us to be able to go to eight, but we gotta we gotta get people home after eight, okay? So we can go to eight o'clock. We're at seven thirty-five now, so we got twenty-five more minutes. It should get it should get pretty much everyone, but I just want to set expectations for everyone. So if you're in line at eight, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up at eight o'clock, okay? All right. Name, address, two minutes. Hi, I'm Carolyn Newsom. My address is five zero nine Clearwater Drive, Nashville, Tennessee three seven two one seven. And uh, basically, the, the guy behind, uh, just in front of me kind of got my point that it seems like I've been listening to all these comments, and most of the people that live in this neighborhood who it's going to impact, they are the ones that are opposing it. And the ones who are supporting it, for the most part, live elsewhere. They're coming in. And I also heard him say a lot of people saying that they, uh, they used to come to the racetrack. And I just wonder, do you still come? You know, maybe that's part of the problem. Um, you know, and as far as the soccer stadium, you remember all the uproar with the traffic that came in when they, they had nowhere to park. They had nowhere for, nobody knew what was going on. It was just a mess. I used to work over at Mix 989, and it's like they would always be cars lined up, traffic, noise, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so that, I think, is one of the big issues is, is that we've already got that here. Why would we compound that with more, you know, with, with updating everything? Um, it just seems like developers have just come in and just like basically just eaten Nashville up. You know, everything that's going up is shiny and new and all that kind of stuff. And the, the stuff that we needed is, is, you know, streets and taxes and things like that are not done. Um, but what concerns me most is the taxpayers that out of that $108 million that you spoke about, we are going to be responsible for about 65% of that with those bonds because that money's got to come from somewhere. Um, so I'd like to see the budget for the renovations and kind of see where this money is going. I mean, what what is that money going to be covering in terms of repairs and maintenance and that kind of things? So that's kind of my my take on everything from what I've been hearing is is it's not really about the noise because everybody is used to the noise. I could even hear it from the soundproof studio <laughs> at Nick's, but it's just about the the increased traffic, the increased congestion, everything that that's going to bring with it. So I don't, I don't agree with it. Thank you. Name address, two minutes. Marty Lewis. I live at 109 Dickerson Road. I don't get my mail there, so I don't know the exact zip code. First of all, I've been to tracks all over the world, not just in this country, but all over the world. I'd much rather watch a race at the fairgrounds than any track there. And Bristol is not tearing the track down and building a new one. They're taking what is there and making it better for everybody. And everybody's hollering, or most of them are hollering about 30,000 seat there. We got a 30,000 for the soccer fans. They find a place to park them. 
what would be different than parking them for a NASCAR race, race, you know, and we still need to have a special meeting for this here like we did everything else. And that's all I've got to say, so I'll save the time for other people. Okay. Thank you. Name address, two minutes. Erica Lanier, 1707 and 1709 Neil Terrace, um, 37203. I was not going to speak tonight, um, but as I sit in the audience and I listen, I just wanted to address some of the things that I've heard. Um, did I know when my mother purchased her home in 1985 that there was a racetrack? Yes. Did I know when I purchased the home next to her in 2009 there was a racetrack? Yes. But the racetrack that exists now is not what NASCAR is proposing. They are two totally different animals. So what I am saying as a 50 plus mother is that if it were in your neighborhood, how would you feel? For the elderly who have to listen to this noise, for the veterans that Bristol Motor Speedway has said they're going to support that have PTSD. What do you think those effects are? For the students who are trying to learn, either who live in this neighborhood or who go into the, in surrounding schools, what is the effect? And is it really worth your dollar? If it is, fabulous. I heard someone say, if you don't like it, move. I'm not going anywhere trust. All right, thanks. Uh, name, address, two minutes. Fred Hannon, 3241 Lakeford Drive, 37214. First time I came to the, the track was um, July of 71 when we first moved down here. It was the first thing my dad brought us to when we came to Nashville, so I have a very strong connection that way. And back then, they raced once a week and then at some point, it went to, I think they were racing Tuesdays and Saturdays for a long time. And then when NASCAR pulled out, it was mostly because they would not make the um, adjustments to the track to make it safer. You know, and I, I live less than a mile from the airport. I'm right next door to it. And I listen to that. I can hear I-40 in my living room. It doesn't bother me. My sister lives less than a quarter mile away from um, Highland Rim Speedway in Greenbrier, she falls asleep till the race is there. Uh, we're not talking, everybody's acting like this is going to be a totally different track. I mean, it's going to be still five-eighths mile with a quarter mile track. All you're doing is improving the embellishments to it. And SMI is very good at getting people in and out. So traffic is not going to be as much of an issue as the amateurs that are here letting people park in front of, you know, get, getting their cars towed because they don't know what to do. They will find that the parking is going to be a lot better once this all gets done. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. May I have addressed two minutes? Uh, my name is Daniel Barron. Uh, uh, hold on, Daniel. Which I'm just saying. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. No worries. No worries. Uh, Chase Ab, 151A, Rains Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. I'm also the board president of SNAP, which is the local uh, Wedgwood Houston neighborhood group. Uh, from the start, this deal was crafted with a limited number of officials behind closed doors and presented to the community. The racing group would probably say this is community involvement. They might even call this a community benefits agreement. A couple things are clear here. The racing side has no clue what an actual CBA is, and there's no intention of working with the communities in Nashville because this isn't for the communities in Nashville. This is for tourists at the expense of Nashville's communities. That's why we have an opposition letter signed by five surrounding communities saying they do not want this proposal to proceed. The most recent signing was just in the past couple of weeks, which makes it clear that as more residents find out about this proposal, the more people don't want it. I also want to discuss the financing here and try to simplify things. Some funds come from the state, some funds come from the CBC, and the rest from bonds issued by the Metro Sports Authority. These bonds are debt that needs to be paid back. Similar to a mortgage you would take out to build or buy a new home, 
they are borrowing money to build a new speedway. But here's how it's different. If the racing group doesn't generate enough revenue to cover that debt, then they are not on the hook like I would be for my mortgage. They have the city, the taxpayers, you and I, that will pay through the city's general fund to cover the shortfall. If you think that's crazy, just, I mean, just, just take a look. The Sound Baseball Stadium, which has already been mentioned tonight, this has happened before. We need to learn from previous mistakes we've made with all of these huge entertainment venues. And having BMS back this debt is a big item that needs to be covered in this proposal for it even, for it even to move forward. There's also the NASCAR level races that are going to take place. This is taking place in 100 yards of affordable housing and a daycare, 200 yards of an elementary school, and surrounded by thousands of tens of thousands of residential units. This is not a place uh, that this type of activity should happen. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, Dan, address two minutes. Hi, my name is Daniel Barron. I apologize to the other speaker for interrupting. Um, I um, Daniel, my, real quick, address. Sorry. Well, I live in 37138. Um, I'm not comfortable giving my address for privacy reasons. Uh, my family has lived uh, for almost 70 years at the corner. You all know that. And, um, you know, in those, 69, in those 69 years plus now, uh, not a single race has ever uh, been an acoustic issue. It has never been a problem. The first time there's ever been a problem was the Shania, Shania Twain concert just a few weeks back. Um, we could hear every lyric in the interior closets of the house. Um, the people I spoke to leaving, uh, some of them left early and they, they quote, it was painful. It was deafening. Um, so that's one point. Uh, the next is that if Nashville has, can have two stadiums for soccer between here and the Titan Stadium, and you know that the, the new Titan Stadium will will certainly be designed to host soccer events. Um, the Middle Tennessee region can support two speedways. I, I, there's, there's no question about that. Um, and the, the third point deals with uh, something that has come up repeatedly to, tonight and in the last several months um, from um, marketing mater materials from State of Nashville, from um, other speakers, and it has to do with the fact that this, this, the stadium team guarantee does not secure the state Series 2020 bonds. The official statement for those bonds states that, and I just, I just read it, the team guarantee for the stadium does not secure Series 2020 bonds. You cannot compare, you cannot state that the, the Speedway deal is somehow different. Thank, thank you. Yeah. May have addressed two minutes. I'm Mark Watson, 2203 Klein Avenue, 37 to 11. I was born off of Polk Avenue in 1956. I owned a place on Rosedale since 83. Some of you people probably threw beer cans in my ditch after the races. Appreciate that. I'm an engineer. I'm not an audiologist but I'm a well-schooled in sound and vibration. I'm a stickler for a common set of facts. Math and financing is not a foreign language to me. I'm impressed that Bristol Motor offers this really muddy take it or leave it offer by trying to bypass our city's council 2011 mandate for a two thirds vote for fairground changes and then spends a fortune to get this deal done. I'm very impressed by the amount of money that has been spent to convince everybody in here of what this is happening, what is happening here. Restore the speed bay without any expansion. No problem. People in here, no problem. We committed to it by charter, but do not fool yourself Folks from Bristol will control access to this track. It will not be Nashville's racetrack. Y'all can pretend it is, but it won't be. This will be Bristol's track. They'll put anybody in here they choose to, like it or not. Cost of the upgrades? Don't believe them. I've run projects five times the size of this $30 million track. 
You guys don't have segregated sumps underneath this track for all the fluids you're going to pour out. You're going to dig this track up, and you're going to have to build it from scratch. You know that. I don't believe in your sound mitigation. Had your machine set up in my yard to listen to a race about two years ago. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks. Name, address, two minutes. Joy Andal, 2197 Nullinsville Pike, 37211. Um, first of all, I want to thank the Fair Board, Councilman Sledge, the director, um, Ms. Weiner over here. Um, Y'all listened to me more than a year and a half ago when I came and said, we've got some accessibility problems. We rolled all over this property. Y'all brought in a couple dozen people to look at things and start making things happen. You don't know how much I appreciate that. You got a, we got sidewalks along Craig Head just recently. Vision Zero, I volunteer on that, uh, make recommendations for safety to stop, you know, traffic deaths. That's been wonderful here. You got us a, 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 a ramp in in four days so that I could access here. Things are coming down and the fairgrounds is becoming so accessible. But we have, what's in the best interest of the child is a question somebody would hear if you were going through a divorce. What's in the best interest of the child? The Speedway is the last child that hasn't been taken care of. Whether it is Bristol, another funding opportunity, or the city, it's gonna to have to be done. And what maybe y'all don't know is that it's gonna cost a lot of money to become ADA accessible. It's got to be done. And do we wanna pay for it as taxpayer or do we want a funding opportunity to do that for us? You're gonna to have to have a yearly um, revenue to maintain all these kinds of things. It just doesn't take care of itself. So I'm in favor of the speedway being restored, however it happens, if it's this, but please think of my community. My community, I ride Access Ride, and I cannot go to Murfreesboro to Miracle Field because Access Ride doesn't go out of county. Good. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. No, thanks. <laughs> Dave, address two minutes. Janice Turner, 1107 Belvedere Drive. Nashville 37204. I live over near Lipscomb University. I've been a resident of Nashville and in the sound area of the, the Speedway here for 30 years. Now I can tell you that we hear it over at Lipscomb and some nights we hear it really, really loud. It depends on what the cloud cover's like. These hills in Nashville make things echo and bounce and come all the way there. I am opposed to this primarily because of the sound. I don't believe that the mitigation that they've put forth so far will help. And I do not want additional sound where I am. It's already loud enough as it is. Additionally, I am concerned about the financing agreement. It doesn't seem to be on the up and up. And I would appreciate our council and this board looking at that more carefully and making sure that the national taxpayers are not left on the hook for this, like we have been for so many of these other ventures of sports uh, uh, areas. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All the way to the back, we've got eight people left and we got about 10 minutes. So just keep that in mind. Go ahead. Name, uh, address, two minutes. Lisa, jo Lisa Johnson, Ridgemont Drive, 37207, Nashville native. Um, I'm not going to beat up on a lot of things that have been trying not to repeat. Um, it is historic. It's actually a little more historic than some of what's been said here tonight. So I'm just going to try to highlight on that. Um, there's been racing going on at this track a little longer than what has been mentioned here tonight. Um, it's a, there's been some sort of racing going on at this site since 1891. As someone mentioned earlier, it was originally harness racing. Um, 1891, that's one year older than the Ryman Auditorium. Now stop and think about that for a minute. The Ryman, the, which is what Nashville is known for. That's why a lot of people come to Nashville here. 
we're known as the music capital of the world. Now, that's, people come here, but that's what's going on here before that was even built. Now, did, I'm sure there's some people in this room that knew that, but there's a lot of people here that had no idea. Now, you can research it. I'm sure there's somebody here that's probably on Uncle Google looking it up as I'm talking. But just in case you didn't know it, this deal is a win, win, win for Nashville. It's a win, win, win for the fairgrounds. It's a win for the taxpayers. It's a win for racing fans. It's a win for the community, for neighbors, for, and I apologize. Thank, thank you. I appreciate you being here. No, thank you. Uh, name, address, two minutes. Uh, hi, my name's John Spragans, 1075 2nd Avenue South, 37210. Uh, thank you all for your time tonight and for running this very nice uh, meeting. Um, you know, there's been a lot, a lot of talk tonight about sort of citizenship and who's lived in Nashville longest and all that stuff. And I confess, I was born in Kentucky and then lived here for 36 of my 41 years. Um, Kentucky's on my mind right now, though, because... Um, Kentucky's had an experience with Bristol Motors and SMI. There was a racetrack in Kentucky where this company promised to have racing and to have NASCAR Cup races, um, just like they're promising us now. And they said, you know, we'll, we'll run these races and it'll be a big boon to your economy here in Kentucky. And then things changed. And Jerry knows this. You moved the races down to Atlanta, took them out of Kentucky, and left Kentucky with no races anymore at that track. And what happened there is now it's a parking lot, Ford trucks and Amazon trucks. It's not a racetrack anymore. So what I want to know, respectfully, Jerry, is will you commit in writing to keep the races at this racetrack for the 30-year term of this lease? You could, it's, well, it's, we're not going to do back and forth, but thanks for all right, thank you. Thanks. All right, name, address, two minutes. I'm Sutherland Marlin House, and I'm in Columbia, Tennessee. I've been on the NASCAR circuit my whole life. My first race, I was two weeks old at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and I can assure you I can hear perfectly fine. Um, this track has been treated like a redheaded stepchild, and we finally have somebody that is wanting to come in here and do something for it. Everybody keeps saying, well, you have a track 21 miles from here. Yeah, we do. It's apples and oranges. It's like Sound Stadium, Yankee Stadium. Completely different track. And you keep saying 21 miles, why don't you move 21 miles away? I can assure you there's other areas. This track is they are going to try to do the best they can to fix and bring in the glory that this can be and could be. And Nashville, y'all might not want to hear it. It's a tourist city now. I mean, it's it's a tourist city. Where is everybody coming to all these BOMA meetings? You're complaining about traffic. What about the BOMA meetings? Where are y'all at with all these hundreds of condos being built? I don't see all these people there. You know, and you want to talk about affordable housing, why don't you turn the condos right there in affordable housing? But that's not going to happen. That's going to be sold for a profit to John Ingram, who which everybody keeps Talking about Millionaire's Playground, just looked up his net worth, $4.3 billion. But y'all are going to shake your fingers at BMS. We're just asking y'all to respect the history we have in a company that is finally going to try and bring it back. That's all we're asking. Thank you. Dave, address two minutes. Jeff Gillis. 3746 Faulkner Drive, Nashville 37211. The one part of this whole facility, whole area that needs repair is obvious. The track, the facilities around the track is what needs to be re, uh, reconfigured. And they've got the plan. They've got the the whole infrastructure to do that. And I'd encourage you to follow the plan that he's got. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Name, address, two minutes. 
Debbie Ferguson, 26. Let her, let her go ahead and she started. Okay. okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Debbie. Debbie Ferguson, 2618 Ennis Road, Nashville, 37210. Um, I just want to say I, I did not grow up at this racetrack, and I did come to love uh, this sport and these this family here over 30 years as a spectator. I do enjoy traveling to see racing, and I've been to um, to Bristol, and I'm looking forward to going to Las Vegas in the fall. I have listened to a lot of people that have spoken here tonight, and I think there's a lot of perspective, and I believe, and this is what I, I think is going to happen. And the real truth is nobody knows if the sound wall is going to work until you install it. We already know this area supports 30,000 people to attend an event um, with the soccer stadium, so th that's already happening. And I think it's a little insulting to the fair board and to the council that they would allow a, a financial deal to go through without completely and totally vetting it and without asking for compromise, which has already been made. So I wanted to think about what would happen if this deal does not go through. There's still going to be racing, but it's going to be antiquated racing, meaning the same noise and not welcoming or inclusive for all. Plus, as a taxpayer, I'm still going to pay for it because even if it's a pay for this rundown facility, the property values will increase here just like they have in any area that we that that this city has developed. And unless you allow this opportunity to pass, we will never, ever know what could have been for this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, real quick. Just checking your line, right? Yeah, you're alive. Okay, great. So everybody look around. Here's the cap. Lady over here is the last one over here. Gentlemen, at the earpiece is the last person over here. Good? All right, go for it. Name, address, two minutes. Yeah. My name is Amanda Christine Jensen, and I live in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 37128. I'm also an MTSU student, an undergraduate. Um, I'm here to remind you that you're a civil servant <laughs> and that your mandate is to the people and not and not corporations, not NAS, like not racist NASCAR, um, and that we see you prioritizing concrete over a good night's sleep, over clean air, and a good quality of life for the people that actually live around here. So, I see that this is this is something that that we can parse out as as economics, but we need. We need you to take care of people because that's your job. Not take care of him. Not take care of, of yeah, not take care of any NASCAR. You need to take care of people. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, address two minutes. My name's Harold Ferguson. I live at 2618 Ennis Road, 37210. I have been around this racetrack since I was a kid, I've grown up here. Uh, this track has been squares down. I mean, we used to run 22 races a year, and people talk about the noise, and now we run eight or 10 events a year. So we have sacrificed a bunch. All the racers have sacrificed a bunch. But this deal here in Bristol, I think, will be great for Nashville because these sound walls will do wonders for these neighborhoods and if we go to Bristol and it's a first class act and you you don't have to worry about moving getting the people in out because they'll figure that out and it'll work great because they know how to handle people it's amazing what they do with the crowds that they have so I'm all for this and think it'll be great for the city and won't cost the taxpayers a dime. Thank you. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Uh, my name's Tracy Green. I'm at 443 Atlas Drive, Nashville, 37211. I'm a Nashville native, lived here all my life. Been coming to the races since the 70s. Um, as a Southern said earlier, this is Music City, the tourist town. We have a football team. We got a hockey team, a soccer team. So what's wrong with having a racetrack restored that's going to bring NASCAR back? So I'm for it, and hope everybody will 
come to terms and we get this thing done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Name, address, two minutes. Roger House, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, I was born and raised in Nashville, right about 20 miles from here. Uh, I grew up at this racetrack, coming here all my life. My daddy brought me here when NASCAR ran here. Uh, I met Richard Petty, the Allisons, the Petties, all the NASCAR drivers. Had my pictures made with them. Uh, and my my kids didn't get the opportunity to meet all of them because they done away with NASCAR here. I want it brought back where my grandkids can come and have that opportunity that I had when I was growing up in Nashville. And I want NASCAR back here, and I hope y'all do everything uh, to bring it back. I mean, I think the red shirts represented well tonight. I mean, I think it was a bunch of us here wanting it back. So appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, so that concludes our meeting in the evening. A couple of quick notes. One, I did want to note there were a couple of their council members who came in, council member Joy Styles and council member Freddie O'Connell, who also attended. So thank you to everyone who attended. Thank you. To oh, sorry, council member Toombs. I apologize. Um, and uh, so thank you to every member who came out. Jerry, thank you. Laura, thank you um, for doing it. Can we please give a round of applause to the staff who helped set everything up um, and stay? Thank you all for everything. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be headed out. Please drive safely. This is, as I mentioned before, posted uh, Metro uh, on MNN, and it'll be posted on YouTube. A link to that will be posted on the Fairgrounds Nashville resource page. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.